Hey there, hi there, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, one and all, to a weekend show. How's it going, Spirit Sparrow? Doesn't mean anything. Who is Noah? Calypto144, thanks for the four months of support. Hey there, Anna's Bana. Salad Fart69, what a name, what a player. Hello, Stonk Mark. Hey there, Villa Ressa. How's it going, Hell's Razor? Mono is spatial. Fire Tron. Touring One. Axel Mestig. Reclusive Caribou. Olivia. A Kentucky Jaily Assassin. Thank you so much for the year and a half. And that Prime sub. Greetings doesn't mean anything. Hey there, Trogix. A Clayton Hello. And all my lovely Lurker crew. Greetings to you. It's good to be here. Hey, yeah, apologies if I've butchered your username's pronunciation. I gotta, gotta pronounce thousands every month, every week. So many. Definitely don't always get them right. Do feel free to correct me. It might take a couple of times before I it clicks for a particular username, but do feel free to correct me on your pronunciation if I'm butchering you. Butchering you. Mono Espacial. Oh, so, so it is the Spanish pronunciation. Mono Espacial. Spanish for space monkey. Got it. Of space, got it. Ah, yes. Like, my brain half recognized that as Spanish, but it didn't properly click to me. I think I was looking for the word special, not recognizing space. Speaking of dual space, thanks for two months of support. How's it going, Chevar? I do try to keep the content family friendly. Over time, I've come to swear less and less on the stream and I think I think this has also been part of aging actually is that I've gradually dropped harsh language from my verbiage both on stream and off uh, as I've gotten older I found it rather helpful it helps me stay mentally composed and I come across as more coherent and presentable didn't come around as a, a, a deliberate effort to be family, family friendly, although I have come to appreciate um, the benefits that being more family friendly have gained me. Uh, and I also find an increasing need to stand in opposition to excessive and needless use of harsh language, particularly in the gaming space. It creates a lot of communities and spaces that are needlessly hostile or toxic towards people or subsets of people. And there's really just no need, especially in a hobby that's all about just having fun. Nobody remembers the name properly, nor remembers how to write it. That's a, that's a bummer. It's a bummer right there. And that, that is unfortunately um, typical for certain non-English words. Do I ever miss teaching? I do, definitely do. I, I really miss the ability to just like draw stuff out on a blackboard and, and explain stuff. And I also miss, I guess I'm still allowed to just go on random 15 minute tangents. That part of teaching was very fun. I also oddly enough miss designing uh, exams, writing out questions to try to test somebody's knowledge is very fun. I used to teach chemistry, um, introductory college level chemistry. So like Chem 101, managed the labs. I was in charge of two laboratory rooms and the lab stock room for them. So I did stuff like prepare chemical solutions and 
set up apparatus for for the students and such. Did the experience teaching influence my educational Slay the Spire streams? It, it definitely shapes how I talk. I could just buy a blackboard and, and just have it behind me, right? Do I have a PhD? No, just a, actually just a bachelor's, believe it or not. Technically, I shouldn't shouldn't have taught without a master's degree, but uh, I ended up not finishing my master's degree. I was getting started on it, but ultimately decided to reject academia at large and play video games instead. And I've, I've decided that that was a good choice. I'm much happier here now than I ever was teaching. I like the actual in-classroom aspect of, of teaching to students, but I didn't like any of the greater structure, the organization that was the school and all of the various hoops one had to jump through. Yeah, it's been working out in my favor, definitely. Definitely, definitely. I'm not familiar with Carl Sagan, the streamer. I am familiar with the original scientist and his beautiful, beautiful bull cut. It's a good day, Jankoviak. Coding boot camp, and even there you don't es escape the nonsense. Such a bummer. Hello and welcome to Xander. Found me from YouTube. Is there a way for you to know what the current streak is at? There sure is. Exclamation point streak at any time. We'll give you a breakdown of the current win streaks. We have a rotating streak, which is the number of consecutive wins across... Just back-to-back -back runs across uh, all characters. We always switch characters whenever we win. And then each individual character's win streak is also tracked with notably the Watcher being on a particularly long streak of wins here. We haven't lost since August. It's been almost two months. We lost to Sentries. I took a Like Water? I took Fear to Evil Meditate. I took the Regret and the Relic from Big Fish? Oh, because I had Duvu Doll. Like, what the heck was I doing in this run? Bought a Mental Fortress. Got Mummy Hand Like Water. Actually, that's a pretty good Like Water. But Sentry still killed me on turn two. Because I couldn't kill one of them, probably because I had a uh, regret and a like water on the deck. Also, I ran into three elites with no rest site. Like, what the heck was I doing? Hello? <laughs> Seems like a crazy choice. And I say that partially because we are about to play the Watcher to go for number 19 here close to tying our previous best watcher streak. Just a few more runs to uh, to tie it. We should be able, able to get there uh, sometime next week and figure out if we're if we're beating our PB. Did no one tell me like water was cringe? I mean, I I widely rather I think that like water is widely underrated as a card on watcher. It's a little bit conditional and annoying. Uh, but I think one need only compare numerically like water and metallicize to get an idea of the actual power behind like water. Like water is five or seven block per turn. Meanwhile, ironclads putzing about with a card that's three or four. It's almost twice as strong as metallicize is. Uh, all you need to do is be in calm. Problem is, I think Watcher really doesn't like a card like metallicize all that much you want to either generate a lot a lot a lot of block or you don't want to generate any because you're killing everything and so consistent block every turn not really what she's about but yeah i do think it i do think it's pretty powerful 
under certain circumstances. In that run, with we had three calm sources and a mummified hand. I think and calipers, which made it arguably uh, worth considering at least. That said, overall, uh, looking at that run history, I question most strongly my pathing, and I remind myself that it's never ever correct to take the regret relic. Just never correct. Let's play some Watcher. Could be a one hit point elite here. Here? Oh my goodness, look at all these rest sites. Wow. Look at this path. Look at this photo path. It makes me laugh with how many upgrades we can get. So normally Watcher wants to go maybe a little bit more heavy into elites. I, I did say something along this line earlier though. Um, last no earlier this week I think we we're talking about talking about elites and the ideal number to take. Something like. 30 to 50 percent. I'm actually be really curious about the statistical numbers on this for reals. But there's a, a reasonable odds that when Slay the Spire generates an Act 1 map for you, that two is the maximum number of elites that you can fight with any pathing, period. And that's the case on this one. There's two elites maximum, period. No path can hit more than two. So unless we encounter the Dead Adventurer, then we're not going to do better than that. Is going routine sadness. World record record for Watcher streak is in the thirties. That's right, Merle with thirty eight, who is here in chat. So of our starting bonuses. In a 5 upgrade world, actually, choose a colorless card is not the worst. There's some uncommon colorless cards that are relatively decent for Watcher, like Flash of Steel. Uh, Trip is pretty good, too. Good Instincts can do good work. Don't like a bandage up that much. Three one health enemies, not really a big deal. I think I would much rather trade 6 max HP for a random rare relic. Losing the Miracle to gain a random boss relic, also very good. But I think a random rare is likely to lead to a very good start here. Nuruzi says there's a six elite act one possible. You hit four plus dead adventure the other day. Yes. Yes. With wing boots, I think you can even make it seven. Am I proud of the record? You bet I am. 20 wins is a crazy number of wins in a row. I'm very, very proud to have managed that. All right, give me the random rare relic. A pocket watch, one of my favorites. And before we begin, a dad joke for Squeak. Did you hear about the man who made a belt out of watches? It was a complete waste of time. So, we're fighting Slimbo. We're going to go to this shop if I bonk multiple elites and want the upgrades. Question is, is five upgrades in Act 1 actually good? Sounds self-evident to me. The answer would be yes, but there are other things you can get for your nodes beyond upgrades. Potions, rewards of cards, and money from taking combats or maybe removals from events. Money also ultimately leads to removals. So I think it's worth at least thinking about not going to Five Fires very briefly before I still choose to go to Five Fires, almost assuredly. You can also just recall earlier, get the later fire, that's true. Kalar Durin, thanks for 27 months of giving me Jeff Bezos' money. Yeah, imagine if we'd gotten Peace Pipe from Niall, that's right. And then there was a sundial in the first chest. I mean, silly things. We could get it from the first elite, right? 
Almost assuredly, I'm going to upgrade Eruption here. I think what we do is this. We take three combats, get our first three card wards. This gives us information. After this combat, if I have potions, then we'll go this way and fight the elite. If I don't have any potions after three combats, we'll go to the shop instead and buy a potion with which to kill the elite. Hello? Block cards, are you there? Yeah, exactly. Well spotted, evil muffins. We can take one less by killing this louse. Although that does require us to sacrifice the pocket watch. I don't think that'll be a problem. Die, fiend. Bonk. You ever just unavoidably take 14 to lice as the watcher? That's a lousy start. Pretty happy with Empty Fist first. I don't think we want these sort of trip style attacks when we have Pocket Watch here. Pocket Watch really wants us to play exactly three powerful cards each turn so that we continue to draw like a maniac. How good is follow-up? Generally speaking, follow-up is a very good first card. If, if Empty Fist wasn't here, I'd be very happy with follow-up. Solidly a B plus in Act 1. Follow-up is notable for having a nearly as good upgrade as Empty Fist does. Empty Fist gets plus five and gets super praise for that. But follow-up is plus four on an attack that's ostensibly free. And a follow-up plus really carries Act 1 on Watcher. Taking the fist, though. Okay, how much more reasonable turn one? Could have just as easily lost 12 here, right? So... Kind of losses average out, I tend to find, in Slay the Spire. Sure, you have one fight that goes really weird and then terribly, but the next fight goes fine, and you've got health nonetheless. Liquid Bronze. Ooh, and fan favorite early cut through fate is an exceptional card here. Swivel and Worship are interesting within the context of a pocket watch. Swivel is a dense block card that allows us to make a future attack free, and that can carry over between turns, which is particularly interesting. Worship also allows us to draw a whole big hand and then burst into divinity. Also allows us to redraw the worship very quickly, right? Hmm. I don't think that worship does much for us right now, but it... It definitely becomes good with any other mantra source. Hmm. I think I just take a cut through fate though. We need to get the, the basic attacks that the glue that hold the deck together before we can start to add the fancy stuff. Good Miracle, Vigilance, Defend, Defend. Problem is, I think they can do the same thing next turn, although Cut Through Fate, Empty Fist gives me more energy next turn. Okay, let's do that. Close enough. I actually should have just defended instead of playing strike defense. But we're good here. Here we'll play three cards. And the next turn we kill. So only minus three on this fight. Overall, we come out of the first three fights with 42 health, which is um, below average, but not terrible. Weave, Cutthroat Fate is a thing, as is, you know, Flurry of Blows, Empty Fist, but both work against the Pocket Watch in ways I'm not that interested in. Pressure Points Pocket Watch actually better than average. Finally, a Pressure Points. Um, but I'm not going to be taking a Pressure Points here. Especially not going into Slime Boss. 
Pressure Points can be a card that can win a run if built around, but it's really only self-synergistic, so you're really all in on the one card. Better than I would think with Watch. I could believe that. Yeah, I could believe that. I don't feel like I need it, though. Or even really want it. What is this draw? Hello? Alright, we're guaranteed to see Eruption if I pocket watch, so let's just go Vigilance. And presumably I need to kill them both, so let's do some quick math here. Um, we will have Eruption, Miracle, and then four energy. So we can play Eruption, Strike, Strike, Cut Through Fate, Empty Fist. So Eruption, Empty Fist would be 27, that kills you. 12, 12, okay, yeah, that's more than enough to kill them both. Don't need to overthink this, cool. You guys are dead. Super d dead. The Vault Card, extra good with a pocket watch. Can't believe we're seeing this on floor four here. What? Hello? Vault basically just says, spend three energy, draw three cards, and then get three energy back. Uh, draw eight cards, get three energy back. Take another turn, draw three, yeah. Pretty absurd, with with Pocket Watch in particular. And uh, this, is, this now means we can take anything that says, once per turn, do something, and they become better. So, uh, Devotion, for example, just got a lot better. Study just got a lot better. I'm going to five rest sites? Hell yeah, give me two random upgrades. Strike and defend, my favorites. Let's see, 23 health. There is no enemy that can harm me, right? Of the elites, like, would draw eight per turn, sentries are no problem. Lagavulin's gonna be easy, and Gremlinob's gonna be easy, especially with a fear potion. So, I'm just going to upgrade Eruption. We'll go into that Elite fight with 23 health. If I need to rest, we'll do it after the Elite. There's maybe a draw order against the three sentries that could go, like, really weird. But it's only going to go really weird if my Eruption costs, too, right? I think we should be okay here. Liquid Bronze helps with them. Wouldn't say it necessarily solves them, but it definitely helps. Instead, we're facing a Gremlin Knob. Draw nine next turn. So my first instinct would be to use Fear Potion here, but what if we don't even need to do that? Very high chance to get Eruption and Vault next turn. I can play them with Miracle, right? I could do Eruption, Miracle, Vault. I could always use the Fear Potion next turn, right? Like we're really not going to need much extra damage. I'm pretty sure we're going to get this without even using the Potion. Yeah, so we can go Miracle, Eruption, Vault. Be in Wrath, draw eight more, and the Gremlin Knob has 60 health. Actually, can I do 60? There's no way, right? No, I do need the Fear Potion to do this. No, you're right, I do need this. Okay. Foolish. Right, because that would have been eight, 
14 plus 18 plus... Um, yeah, 18 times 3 against a 60 health knob. That would have been 54 damage. Left knob at 6 without the fear potion. We needed that fear potion. Okay, but that went well. We got a potion back. Now we have a block potion. And we're also offered a bowling bash, which is a card that I do like. Conclude is here, but I really don't like Conclude alongside Vault. Bowling Bash is a perfectly cromulent card. Don't mind having one more dead card with the Pocket Watch. And that makes Sentries a lot safer, too, especially if I then upgrade it. With the Block Potion, I feel safe upgrading Bowling Bash. And then upgrading Vault. And then upgrading... Absolutely whatever the heck I want. Empty Fist next. Am I very confident against cubes now? Oh yeah, like... Super. Ooh, start each combat in calm. That's very, very nice. Two extra energy the first time we play Eruption or Empty Fist. Assuming we haven't prior played Vigilance. One of my favorite relics on the Watcher. It's like a, a double lantern, but... But yes, but no, you know? Greetings, cubes. Prepare for death. I'll bonk you three times. It's just satisfying noise. Four cubes. Never stood a chance. So yeah, uh, I don't think that Orichalcum helped that much against those. Hmm, a Simmering Fury with, with Vault is kind of interesting. And with Teardrop Locket, although draw two next turn can be a little redundant with Pocket Watch. I could see this being okay. Time for Watcher's favorite card? You mean Skip? Don't see me pick Simmering Fury very often. I don't take it very often. I do want another way to get into Wrath in this deck. I just... I mean, and we're offered two of them. So it feels kind of weird to skip both of them being excessively greedy, I think, in, in fact, to, to skip both of these. Let's do the Simmering Fury Vault thing. That's actually kind of cool. I also love Vault with Captain's Wheel. Vault accelerates the Captain's Wheel, meaning we can get 18 block on turn two if we play it. Yeah, none of these cards say Tantrum. Such a bummer. All right, upgrade Vault prior to the shop. Definitely. Just in case we're offered another vault, but we're offered a hand drill, which is not another vault. Incense burner is nice with vault. Shame we can't afford it, but I can afford a dark shackles. So that's kind of cool. In addition to a card remove. Dark shackles is very nice with vault because as an enemy debuff, uh, it doesn't fade when you take another turn. Judgment, that's a fun. Judgment can be really nice in setup heavy watcher decks. Don't really think you need a judgment when you've got a bowling bash for the most part. Not taking a hand drill. I'm gonna go uh, Dark Shackles card remove here. And that card will be a defend, of course, especially with, since we have Orichalcum here. These block cards are pretty tepid. Another good use case for the... Oh, we can upgrade the Dark Shackles? Hell yes. This is a... Often overlooked, but obscenely powerful upgrade. 9 strength reduction goes to 15 strength reduction, making it so strong it blocks even single attacking enemies. In addition to being in the form of strength reduction, so it'll work when we're in Wrath Stance, too. Why do Bowling Bash and Judgment serve similar purposes? They're both one energy cards that kill a low health enemy. 
in multi-enemy multi situations. Uh, both of those cards will instantly kill something like a Reptomancer Dagger, or one of the three Slavers, or a Darkling, or something like that. There's some difference in use case. For example, you can use the Bowling Mash on the Reptomancer for huge damage. You can't do that with Judgment. Yeah, but think of the energy cost. Curse for Doubt. How about no? And I guess I just go one more upgrade into Slime Boss. I'll upgrade Empty Fist, and we've never actually needed... Um... To rest at all. We just went to... One, two, three, four, five upgrades of our choice, plus two random upgrades. So a very highly upgraded deck. Without Lesson Learned, and some Stellar Relics. And some pretty good cards. And a removal. I'd say overall this has been a pretty good Act 1. We're a little bit low on money because I didn't take that many fights, but otherwise, very happy with our position currently. Obscenely so. Keep that vault for later. Question mark? 28 go to 101 or play vault. I want this on turn three. Keep the vault for now. Do you want Simmering Fury though? that, draw the slimed, then Miracle, take another turn, Kerblam, nice split, nerd. Boop, boop. The booping. Looks like a skip to me from these three. Might be tempted to take Deus Ex Machina because it's energy when we're getting lots of card draw, but using the energy prevents us from getting card draw because they're card plays. This will also create hand size problems. You can only have 10 cards in your hand and retaining miracles will be an issue. There's Judgment again. We just talked about how Judgment and Bowling Bash are going to serve similar purposes for us here. We don't need both. I like Judgment more in decks that are trying to set up some sort of elaborate damage plan. If you're doing Alpha, Beta, Omega, then Judgment pairs really well with that. Judgment's good with pressure points. Judgment's good with any Watcher deck that's trying to put a lot of powers in play. If your Divinity deck is slow to get going, Judgment's also good there. What is Conjure Blade for? Conjure Blade is good with an ability to get a lot of energy on one turn and with an ability to scale off of multi-hit attack. So good with talk to the hand it can be. Um, it can be really good if you've got the holy water relic and you start with three miracles. It can be nice for that. Judgment can be a spiker solution, that's true. Dark Shackles sure isn't. Conjure Blade also quite nice with Chemical X, that's true. The Expunger also hits really, really hard if you've got Master Reality in play, and the Expunger is upgraded. The upgraded version does 15 damage per hit, but that's a pretty difficult combo to actually make work. I want Bronze or Skill Potion. Birds just get freaking destroyed anyway, so I don't need this for birds. Give me a Skill Potion. Well, 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 if those aren't a Watcher set of boss relics, I don't know what is. Star Cage Bell. It's not Bell. I would go Star over Bell here. So is it Cage or Black Star? Cage lets us remove two more cards, further slimming the deck. A little redundant with Pocket Watch, honestly. But Black Star will give us bonus money off of Elites. How do we feel about the Elites of Act 2? I absolutely destroy them, don't I? Thank you. 
Maybe not absolutely. I mostly destroy them. There's definitely some bad turn ones. I mean, we could we could waltz into slavers. I draw strike, strike, a sinner's bane, defend, defend, and I just like cry. But then I take 20 damage, we pocket watch, and I slaughter them. So yeah, I'll take a black star. I'll take a black star. Black star means we get more relics from elites, and I see a very juicy path through the act here. Hmm. I definitely like going to an early shop to remove one of the starter cards. But overall, I'm thinking we can do something like this. Something like that. We can opt out of this elite if we're feeling weak. It's really just the first elite we need to be strong for. Turn one could be a problem in some fights. There's the birds. I said we wouldn't need help against them. And I definitely continue to feel that way. Bip. Boop. Hmm. Really? Okay. This does 14. Kill you outright? No, bonk this one. Miracle spend defense. Okay, yeah, I didn't think we needed that Thorns Potion for these three. Didn't think so. Let's just draw eight again. Yeah, perfect bird's fight, no potion used. Get a better potion in the form of a strength potion. I guess that skill potion gets discarded. These are potions that are very good for act two, especially the strength potion for our first elite encounter. It's gonna be very helpful. Do I want an empty mine, perseverance, or cut through fade? I could see empty mine being okay. How's it going, Snayhat? Finally just got to the heart with the Watcher. Orange pellets plus two fastings. That sounds bl like a blast. Fasting is one of my favorite cards on the Watcher. Empty Mine can help that turn one we're talking about. That's true. Yeah, I'll take an Empty Mind. It's nice to have another exit from Wrath as well. My Vault! This is still fine. Bottled Vault would have been pretty hyped too. If only we had slightly more dollars. Still, I can just remove a card. Do I remove a defend or a strike? Remove one more defend. It's wallop better than removing. It could have been, maybe. But I like, uh, I like our turn one consistency here. The Augmenter appears. A man with an eye patch and a devilish grin. Offers to give us drugs that we're un literally unable to refuse. Three strength, uh, three health for two strength from Jax. Not my favorite card here. Kind of hard to uh, sustain the damage it deals. Mutagenic strength would give bonus strength turn one. Problem is that's not a great turn to have strength on. Does Mutagens persist with Vault? No. No. So, for that reason, it's not particularly good. Do I not use Beta Art for clarity's sake? Yeah, that's that's the main reason. I prefer the, the polished art for most cards, too. Most cards. So, I think this is a Transform 2, and I'm happy to transform uh, one more Strike 
One strike in the remaining defend. I'm not going to transform my upgraded defend. We'll get two new random cards. Will they be better than a strike in defend? Maybe? The answer is unfortunately no. <laughs> well, we have a Nirvana and a Devaform. Two powers I don't usually put into my Watcher decks because they're a bit unwieldy. I think that Devaform might actually end up being really good. But uh, we'll see. Definitely Devaform works really well with Vault, and now I'm extra sad we didn't get to buy the bonus Vault. Hmm, okay. Spooky. Very spooky. Back into Wrath, please. Alright, well, the Chosen fight was at least very, very easy here. So we get into the Elite fight with not a problem in the world. Offered a Blessing of the Forge. There's an Indignation. That's the second Wrath entry. I would take that if I hadn't taken the Simmering Fury. But as it is, I don't need any of these. What a blessing of the forge. We've got enough upgraded cards. I think we're better off with the current potions. Do I think Forgotten Art Altar is well designed? It's definitely one of my least favorite events in Act 2, but that doesn't mean it's not well designed. It's painful. It's definitely painful. I do think that there should be events in, uh, in the event pool of Slay the Spire that force you to suffer consequences. There has to be some risk for going to the events. But yeah, that one is uh, that one is tough. Doofga, thanks for 17 months of support. Alright, our first real opponent is the book. And I guess I just play Devaform? Sure, Devaform Dark Shackles. Or I could go, like, Vigilance Defend, but that really gets nothing done. I think I'd rather play this Devaform. Sure, we lose Dark Shackles, but... The extra energy is going to be real, especially with Vault. So let's just do it. Do I use the Strength Potion here? That is the question. Let's see what next turn looks like. Got the Simmering Fury Vault combo, although I think I'm just going to draw directly into the Eruption and play it now, and then Vault... And then I'll have 18 free block. I don't feel like I'm going to need the Strength Potion. Petrofate always draws the Eruption. So I can do, like, Cut Through Fate, Eruption, Strike, Bowling Bash, Empty Fist, Simmering Fury, Vault. Is that too much energy? Hold on. I have seven energy to spend. So five cards. Cut, Eruption, Bowling Bash, Empty Fist, Simmering Fury. Skip the Strike Plus. And then I have, like, two more turns. I draw seven next turn. We're still in Wrath. I have 18 free block. And I have even more energy. Next turn. Yeah, okay. Don't think I need to use the... So, you're always showing the cards in order. Discard both strikes. That means only the eruptions left. We always draw the eruption. That's the power of Scry. It's good stuff. Vigilance, Simmering Fury again. Seems wise. Let's go... Yeah, Strike, Vigilance, Simmering Fury. Don't get killed. 
or better yet, Eruption. Vigilance, Simmering Fury, those are basically identical lines. And now we have 8 energy, we should be able to kill with this, probably. Yep, no potion required. Clean. Oh man. Meat on the bone when we're right at half HP almost. I'll have to take a little bit of damage to optimize that in the next fight. And a Toxic Egg, upgrading all skills, such as, oh, I don't know, a Third Eye Plus? To go with this Nirvana? The power. I like Third Eye a lot. Scry 5 is just incredibly strong. I'm actually really liking the Simmering Fury a lot. That feels weird, but I've, I've really been enjoying Simmering Fury. I'm going upgrade to the, upgrade the draw on this. Alright, so our goal in this fight is to take two damage, if possible. Dude. Miracle Devil Form Vault? Let's just do it. <laughs> Vigilance is perfect here, so I go... Oh, wait. I'm gonna kill you, though. Bowling Bash, Vigilance, Simmering Fury? That's the one. So I take two. Activating meat on the bone. Then I draw 10 cards. And I enter Wrath with 7 energy. Seems good. I think I want that Bowling Bash next turn. Not now. It'll be more damage next turn. I could even deliberately leave the Sneaky Gremlin alive so that it's even more damage, actually. That's hilarious. Let's do that. Check this out. Oh, you're attacking me? Well, guess what? I'm attacking you. Get out of here. Give me that ceramic fish power. Nine gold per card and immunity to weaken. Do we want a halt plus? Not really. Bye. Double boat thingy? Get in here. It's gonna be a bit awkward with vault, but no, it's not. It's gonna be amazing. Get boat value. Whoa, 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 whoa. No one said nothing about plant snakes here. I did not agree to this. However, meat on the bone says we should be fine. Um, am I vaulting next turn? Probably, just to kill it outright. Two of these. Full boat and full omelet. The boat and bacon. I love that. Good old offensive speed potion. Is that better than a strength potion for the collector fight? We're probably not going to need help in collector, huh? Going to destroy everything. Let's continue to go. Yeah, block potion, flex potion. All right, elite number three of the act. 
the Book of Stabbing again. This didn't go very well for you last time, Book. Are you sure you want to play? This time I'm going to leave Dark Shackles in the deck. We're going to go Nirvana, Third Eye, Simmering Fury. Draw nine, take two. Frog Style, thanks for seven months of support. And we'll do Devaform Vault next turn, I guess. Sure, that sounds grand. Maybe Devaform was a huge trap and I just wanted to play three attacks in Vault? Maybe. It could be. Empty Fist, Vigilance, Simmering Fury? Sure. Well, that's quite conclusive. I'd actually rather not draw any of that. This turn. Uh, five energy. Okay. Draw 10. Draw 10. Wait, what? <laughs> That's not fair. Get an Unchaku for energy every 10 attacks because I needed more energy in this deck, and a Gremlin Horn because I needed even more energy and card draw in this deck. Oh. And a way to turn energy and card draw into actual stats with fasting. Fasting Devaform is pretty fun, actually, and I think with uh, with this stuff going on, I actually really like it. It's going to be a big multiplier on everything we do. I like it a lot. The initial cost is a bit much, but that's just making it even better for Pocket Watch. Excuse you? Hello. Um, we'll take 9, putting me to 31. That's actually kind of ideal. 14 plus 9, perfect. Should've done that first. Whoops. Never need that next turn. I don't want to draw more cards next turn. Fist Vault. Go ahead, summon your minions. See what happens to you. Would you like to be hit for 28 times 4? I think so. A solid kabonkening and the scroll bar, the power. You get a potion belt for more potion slots, along with a duplication potion, the green key, the boot. Do I want a prostrate plus with a fasting? Yes, I do. We're going divinity, Twitch chat. It's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it.
zero cost devil form. How's that? Heard good things about it. Let me just go eruption vigilance. Yeah, let's just do eruption vigilance. No need to overcomplicate it. Fool, I am immune. Omniscience Plus. Yeah. Why not? That's going to let us duplicate any card in the draw pile, which is uh, obscene in its own right. We've actually gotten so many good upgrades, I'm very tempted to recall here before we go into the Collector, who is most assuredly going to get destroyed by us. Yeah, we can Omni either Fasting or Deva for him, depending on, well, whatever. We're starting to scale obscenely. It's good. Let's just recall. Let's just recall. In case I missed it, Frog Style, thanks for the seven months. Oh dear. Oh dear. Easy fasting, since I'm gaining way more energy every turn. There's basically no downside there. Show me Bowling Bash, please. Oh, I should have third-eyed for that, actually. Oh, there it is. Alright, well, your stupid minions were easily dispatched. No, what a block conundrum. What do we do? We're like more than 20 short. Not. Still immune to weaken, too. Was uh, was kind of one-sided. Conjure blade looking a little better than the last time we saw it. I don't think we need it by any means, but it is kind of hilarious here. I think it's also a little dangerous. There's certainly an upper limit on how many cards you can put into a Watcher deck that have no immediate effects. Between Nirvana, Fasting, Devaform. Uh, we're already starting to butt up against this limit pretty quick. Add yet more cards that have a similar effect, and we can start bricking draws that really, really hurt. So the less cards like this we can take and still win, the better, actually. Although it is kind of fun. Oh man, Pandora. Well, it's actually not much to transform left with Pandora's box. We've been quite thorough about excising our starter cards from the deck, such that this P-Box barely gives us any transforms at all. Four which is still 36 gold from the Ceramic Fish and potentially upgraded skills. Velvet Choker with Pocket Watch, I guess not the worst thing in the world, does put an upper limit on the number of cards we can play in one turn, which is not that desirable. Or the Violent Lotus, giving us extra energy upon leaving Calm. Don't forget we start in Calm. Not that we need more energy necessarily, but I mean, heck, I'll take it. It's, at the minimum, no downside, which is quite nice. 
Our main goal, get more relics, and guess what? There's another four elite paths so we can get eight more relics to act. In addition to an early shop, you love to see it. Yes, you love to see it. Violent Locust. The stage name. I'll just play this, whatever. Let's see if I care. This anymore, that's good. Just shy of a kill here. All right, I admit. Oh, wait, no, we got it. Okay. I was say, fasting a little awkward there if I don't play the Devil Form first. Definitely gonna play a Fear No Evil, though. Barbinator wants a dad joke. All right. If one was challenging, can I do two? I've got potions. We'll do this in a second. but a goodie for the crowd. What do you call an alligator wearing a vest? An investigator. Positively. No refunds. Empty-minded to devil form. No, I want empty-minded to simmering fury. I can still just play the defend. Okay, that'll work. It's a good turn one. And we got omniscience. Perfect. So, I don't think I want to play the fasting because the future turns get so bad. I think that's what I learned. Very reasonable to use a flex potion here. Extremely reasonable. Let's do it. This becomes 30 twice plus 38. So that kills one. Kill this one. Can we can Omni like Fear Naval if we want to? Sure. Some damage there. Then Nirvana Vault. Here I can play the Diva Forum. Looking for that Dark Shackles now. There it is. Could also very reasonably consider playing the Fasting here. Just to 
Get a bit of bonus damage in. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Get 52 bucks, an unceasing top, which gives us card draw if we ever empty our hand of cards. That's not all that important. F. What do you mean F? Doesn't look like it's an F. OBS is indicating everything's fine. Maybe a local Twitch thing. Blamed Witch. Tough choice here. We either take Prostrate or Wave of the Hand. Wave of the Hand, really nice for playing Mass Weak into enemies for the late game here. But the second Prostrate gets me to Divinity. So I'm going to take that. I'm also going to take one more event here. Designer Inspire. Upgrade, remove, or both. Let's just get another removal. In addition to the one the shop will offer me. There's Wave of the Hand number two. There's also Abacus. That's kind of interesting. Although I'm not actually able to cycle um, the deck all that often. It is six blocks sometime. Tranquility Plus is also kind of interesting. Fasting number two. I think that would be a bit overkill. I think that would be a bit overkill. But Abacus is an option, for sure. Personally inclined to go card removal, wave of the hand. That's what I'm doing. There's still enough attack cards in the deck, right? Hmm. Guess we'll find out. Not gonna buy Ragnarok. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, it seems like there's still attack cards in the deck. Based on this limited limited interaction of ours. Right, why would I buy a Ragnarok? I just have Ragnarok. I think I'll take the Wallop instead, though. Really like Wallop with Divinity in particular. A Miracle Nirvana? I want one more energy instead. If only we could have two omnisciences. Imagine how powerful we'd be then. I want to vault here. I'm just going to go wallop for no evil. That then lines into a super powerful draw turn. Anything to Omni here? I could Omni Nirvana. It doesn't seem all that helpful. Just help me draw good stuff for killing next turn. Oh, I should have played this though. Oh, 
energy. Happy Flower gives energy. Art of War gives energy sometimes. Did I really buy a Wave of the Hand Plus and then get offered a free one? I did. Do I want a lesson learned? Eh. It's... It's still, it's definitely still useful, actually. And I do even still need an attack. All right. Welcome, lesson learned. Yeah, we're going to get enough upgrades out of this. I think it's worth it. Your first kid. Teach us your ways. Do it. Draw here. Repto is pretty easy thanks to the power of Gremlin Horn. I'm really not afraid of this thing. Also, Bowling Bash can hit so really so very hard, especially in conjunction with Volt. I think I go De Evaform. B Bash U and then Volt. Eight more cards, please. Could Omniscient's Bowling Bash here if I was feeling particularly sadistic towards the Reptomancer. Let's instead Omni Fasting. Now Eruption does 34 damage. Hey, there's some good relics. Preserved insects gonna make the remaining elites easier to kill. There are three more this at this run, as well as bag of preparation for more cards on turn one. Also a wish plus, if we want it. It's a way to gain strength or a way to gain money. Though I've just got the side quest from Lesson Learn, so I really don't think I need it. Actually, Halt looks amazing now that I have fasting. I'm gonna take a Halt. Fair enough, I also have to skip Courier. If I could have taken Courier, then the wish would have been really good. Because we could have wished for many dollars. But ultimately, a lot of money at this point doesn't matter that much, because there's only one shop coming up. Perfect. Art of War, do me justice. Ooh, also Happy Flower. Look at that. Five energy out of three. Easy. and I don't even care that you're attacking me. True. Again, I continue to not care about this. Take it slow and steady here. Still too much. All right, don't curse me. Or is it worth taking damage to avoid a curse for sure here? I think I should do this. I forgot I could do that. My potion! My potion. Poor Twitch servers. Maybe someday. Maybe someday they'll figure it out. What do you call a fake spaghetti? An impasta. Oof. 
brutal. Just brutal. Pressure points is back. I'm not taking it. All right, two more elites. Next up, the tiny head. He's so tiny. Look how cute he is. He's adorable. Let's just get rid of this miracle before I start regretting it. Ooh, I am immune. Play these, draw less cards. I want to draw more cards. Hundred and eighteen block that turn. You know. Like you do. to learn every lesson, that's fine. Omomori will block curses, Tungsten Rod will block damage. These cards won't block anything. And that's okay. Bash not in my hand. John the Drong, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. Oh, it's the top card, you say? Hmm. I think I still want to Omni it. to vault later. Draw 10 or let's dish some damage out. Still could use a bit more card draw, like a wheel kick would be good in this deck. Sanctity is also card draw. Perfect. Any card draw is good. So many cards. It's kind of absurd, actually. There we 
we go. We got the wallet plus the second copy of Omniscience. You can use one Omniscience to target the other one. Double Omniscience means we can double Devaform, double Fasting at the same time, which is going to be a little absurd here. And it means we're twice as likely to draw one on turn one, too. And there's other things we can do with it, too, like double Eruption, double Wallop if we need to. You know, just the little things. We can do it separately if we need to. I'll need this prostrate. And then we will enter calm. Boot. Get booted, sir. Get rid of this, too. You dare. This won't do anything. Okay, just play the vaults. I regret everything about what I just did. Block potion this. Doesn't feel necessary. We've got like meat on the bone and stuff. It's fine. We drew all of the burns in the top half of the deck, by the way. Here's the rest of the cards we had. Uh, halt, Empty Mind, Omni, the lesson learned. Hey, and there's healing from the bird face turn. Whenever we play a power, heal for two. Also, do like a Deceive Reality, especially now with Smooth Stone for some uh, top tier block. I like it. Only one unupgraded card. Let's rest a full. No reason not to. We can upgrade our cut through fate using the lesson learned. Here's the double omni play, omni omniscience, targeting double deva form, and what? Double nirvana? Or do I do something a more creative here? Or Vault. Yeah, we could also go Vault. And just, like, take another turn here. Get some free block as well. Single Omni and Greed the Fasting. I mean, we can do all of the above. Oh, you mean, like, later on double fasting? That shouldn't be necessary. I think I'd rather get the fasting in play turn one. Okay, there's Vault. So yeah, double, double Nirvana, I guess. Sure. Discard that one. Should be in calm. Draw more cards next turn. And take one. I guess taking one is fine. Never liked you either, Time Eater. Not even once.
hope you enjoy being weakened for a million years. Okay, there's fasting. Counts to card plays. I care about next turn too much. All right, forget it. Empty mine, hit an attack card. There we go, okay. Needed to get time meter below half health on that turn. And uh, 241 was just above half health. So that was less than ideal. We can do the Dark Shackles trick? That's so funny. Let's do it. Get shackled on, nerd. Purge your debuffs, I dare you. indeed. Get boot valued, nerd. Get divinity valued. Stop the power of card draw. So slimy, though. All right, every card is upgraded. We don't need to worry about uh, landing any lessons in this fight. We just want to focus on winning. Whatever that looks like. A double Nirvana this time. Just purge the lesson learned. That seems fine. Both on the big bird. Interesting. Okay, we let the fasting go for now, which feels a little awkward, but I think it'll be fine. best bottom card. Wait, no! Actually, wait. This is still good. Three cards this turn. Next turn's important. Double... Okay, Divinity next turn, even more perfect. And Happy Flower, and Nunchaku, and Art of War. I have a kajillion energy. 
There's nothing you can do to stop me, kid. <laughs> um, this, then this, then this, then this. Twice. Bonk. More bonk. More mantra. Bonk. Bonk. Forever weakness. Keeping you alive because I can. Have fun, kid. We go infinite with top. Hmm. We can do some very interesting things with the unceasing top in this deck, actually. See what we can do. Thirteen energy, let's spin. This, sure, sure, no, no. Grr. <laughs> Goodbye, friend. See you on the other side. GG. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread. Give me father of the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of these obscene block numbers and energy numbers and, well, really everything. Dr. Jeeves, thanks for four months. That wallop really packs a wallop, doesn't it? The power of fasting. What to do? Sleep, I guess. There's Chemical X. We waited the whole run. Second copy of fasting, it's not too late. Second copy of wallop, it's also not too late. Warship from the early part of the run. We talked about how that was kind of interesting, and now it's more so. I like the extra card draw the Centennial Puzzle offers. Is there any card removal that's interesting? Yeah, lesson learned. Honestly, don't think I need another fasting, though. We've established that. Is it just puzzle remove? Kind of boring, but very effective. So if we're taking damage, I mean, I can take Beat of Death against Heart on, on purpose. That's going to be helpful. <laughs> Secret technique to get Omniscience? I like these thoughts. Fasting double vault. Oh, well, single vault. We get this is our next turn. Now I want to play three cards so I can pocket watch for the burn turn. It's on top of the deck. 
Wave of the Hand Shackles will entirely stop the multi-attack, so let's plan to kill Shield by turn three then. I don't need these cards. Two more. Here, here, Bowling Bash here. Oh, I can't. Um, that's fine. Should have just been Bowling Bash then. Forgot to account for my fasting. Ooh, yikes. Need to find Empty Mind. We go Eruption. Cut through Fate, Empty Mind. Yes. Simmering Fury. I really love this Simmering Fury. I can't, I can't overstate how cool it's been to be able to consistently draw extra every turn by just cycling that over and over again. It's been really good. Truly impressive card. Too fasting, too fury. White Beast Statue. The heart will drop us a potion. Tori's good, though. Tori Tungsten Rod? Oh my goodness. This poor heart has no chance. And there's the wheel kick I asked for. I'll take that. Guess I'll lose the speed potion. These potions are excellent. This turn one is... adequate. Could save the puzzle. The block potion. Actually, would that even do it? I'm going Omni Omni. And then what? I'll double fasting for sure. I could vault again. This could be another, the same turn as before. Deviform, Omni. Fasting Vault. That seems very reasonable. Puzzle could mess up Omniscience. Oh yeah, it can do that. So I think we just open with Empty Fist then. Draw three. Get the health back anyway. Um, I wish I had the energy to play Wave of the Hand, but I don't. Actually, wait. Yes, I do? I go a Vigilance Eruption. I can also dupe the Omniscience and get a third duplication. Of course, if I end in Wrath, then I'm in Wrath. I don't want to do that. Just face Hank the big hit to proc the puzzle. Easy. Guess with Liquid Memories, it's fine, right? Okay. So block Beat of Death. Quite convincingly, too. So we get all the powers in play, and then we get to pocket watch for the real turn two. So we get to draw all this, which isn't even that good. It's fine. I have a million of the stats. 
Let's actually skip the Fear No Evil here so that I get one more energy next turn. Although I'm already getting... We've only got one Devil Form, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. Multi hit first, easy. So this literally can't harm me as long as I exit the Wrath. I can use a third eye to just get rid of the statuses. Bye. Get out of here. And yes, we want to use our Thorns Potion too, of course. Fury for next turn's a little spooky, but again, with the liquid memories, it's completely safe. What is this? Wave Wallop Fear? I have to take a little bit of damage here. This is where the block potion comes in, and then Tungsten Rod Tori prevents this hit. Good job, block potion. Okay, we're divine on this turn. We can almost start using the unceasing top, except these burns are still here. Fist. Now to the Draw that slime and get rid of it. The rod. Bunk. Those safeties in hand. Poor Mr. Hart. Such a rough day. GG. Nice. GG, everyone. GG. Very, very strong watcher run. Very fun to pilot that deck. Really like the omniscience combos when they can yield uh, very, very broken things. Nine relics off the Black Star certainly helped a lot. I think it, as soon as we got our hands on Meat on the Bone Toxic Egg, this was really off to a fantastic start. GG. GG. Yeah, the Spire certainly wanted us to win. I mean, starting with Pocket Watch is always very, 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 very good. That Pocket Watch drew us an average of 5.7 cards per fight. So, yeah, pretty good. Pretty dang good. GG. GG. Prasodia, if you were to make sarcastic comments in my chat all the time, would that make you Sassodia? I'll leave you to ponder that as we take our first break of the day here after this first victory. 
Yeah, I guess there was multiple things that went well here, right? Vault on floor four after getting the pocket watch, and then, well, all the rest of the stuff happened too. Really good run. Really, really good run. GG. If they were into metallurgy, they'd be Brassodia. I thought about continuing this chain of puns, but then I decided to pass Sodia. Alrighty, folks. In a few minutes, we'll do an ironclad run, but first, it's break time. I'm gonna grab a quick snack, refill the water, stretch the legs, that good stuff. When I return... That's a very high score run, by the way. When I return, the ironclad tackles Ascension... 20. BRB, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome. My personal best of streak for the Watcher Ironclad are indeed higher than for the middle two characters. I think Watcher is the most reliable character, at least at the highest ascension level, if you've got comprehensive knowledge of the game and how to build her decks. Ironclad is a weird one. I struggled with him for a long time. He's got so many ways to get crazy powerful that uh, it always feels like there's something you can do. You just kind of have to hold on with Ironclad sometimes and the power will come to you over the course of the run. Silent and Defect can be really tricky. Defect in particular can have a very difficult late game. Silent tends to have a much more difficult early game. And between the two of them, I, I see a bit of a higher failure rate myself, um, as have many other players, although not everybody. I think we'll eventually get some long streaks with Silent and Defect. I mean, heck, we're on a pretty good Silent streak right now. These elites are backwards. I want the burning elite to be here, not here. This is scary. Fighting Hexaghost at the end of the act. That requires us to either incorporate ways to deal with status cards. Um, actually, wait, can I snipe that burning elite? No. Okay, and Yao's Lament gets me nothing good. Like, maybe this elite for one hit point, but it's not even a good path, so I think I'd rather do something like this. I could easily see this being a rare card start. Probably go to the shop. We could even go around, but then we miss the, sh the fire. You have to go to the shop to get to the fire. Something like this, looking pretty good. <clears throat> Is 104 max health a way to deal with status cards? No. No, that will not save you from Hexaghost, I assure you. Don't try it can't just tank your way through that fight. you got to have the damage. This is also a reasonable boss swap, since there aren't early forced elites, and we don't need that much health for Hexaghost. So this would be a pretty good boss swap. I want to see the rare cards here. Immolate, Double Tap, or Berserk. Hmm. Could maybe even go this way, actually. Immolate certainly is a strong opener. I'm very, very happy with that. I wonder if Floor 1 Berserk is ever any good. But I think the, the easy and obvious pick here is to, to take the Immolate. It does massive, massive area damage. Very, very good with an upgrade. It's going to solve a lot of problems. Like so. Get loused, you lousy lice. That's for hurting me on the Watcher. Oddly enough, Sever Soul actually a decent pick here. It's another big attack, and it can get rid of burns, both from the Immolate or from Hexaghost. We'd strongly prefer a Second Wind, but uh, or a Fiendfire. Generally, I tend to think of Sever Soul as inferior to both of those cards. However, in Slay the Spire, having multiple different cards at different rarities that have similar effects is quite nice because you never know what you're actually going to be offered. So taking this Sever Soul now gives us access to some exhausting power for later. Otherwise, I take the Armaments here, which is fine. Let's me upgrade Immolate sometimes, block sometimes. Sure. Let's grab a Sever Soul and see what happens. Ah, this is what happens. Probably would have preferred armaments here, but, well, that's what Burning Blood is for. We'll get that health back. Take that, Ascender's Bane. And look at that. Because of Sever Soul, we kill the Jaw Worm this turn. And get an attack potion. <laughs> Should have taken the armaments. Double Sever Soul. Have I played Domekeeper? I've not played it. I've watched a little bit of it. I think it looks really cool. It seems like the devs have more planned for that game, so... Happy to wait for updates to check it out. Several Soul! <laughs> wait, 
Wait, my water's not in the room? Oh, it's over there. Okay. Why did I not bring it in here? I'm going to take a Warcry. Warcry can set up some fun stuff. It can separate these two cards if I need it. Usually a kind of a do-nothing card is Warcry, but I like picking it up here. Are we into burning elite territories soon with an attack potion? Yeah, let's we'll see what we get from this, but I'm I, we're pretty close to, to being able to go this way now. Let's mark it in red here as our optional challenge path. I like having what I call optionality in your Slay the Spire path, the ability to go one way or the other depending on how well you're performing in the fight, or fights, as it were. And I'd say we're performing pretty well. Oh my. Our through is a block card. This deck's about to take an evolve and a freaking fire breathing. a swift potion, though. A little worried about going into the elite fight with no upgrade. This deck is absolutely going to slap some stuff, though. We have so much more money for the shop if we do this, too. Yeah, we gotta go that way. Let's take the power throw. We're going to red. Oh, and we get an upgrade. Yes. Okay, to make this nice and safe. What a very, very good event. To make this nice and safe, I think we should take an upgrade here. I often say that the, the use case for the room, the upgrade part of Remove Transform Upgrade is to improve your matchup against an imminent elite fight. And boy, are we staring that down big at this moment. So let's upgrade Immolate. Let's just get it done, and then we can smash. Kabonk, sir. You've got no chance, nerd. You have no idea what this deck is capable of. I've got a Sever Soul. Look at that. Full HP. Despite the Jawworm incident. And probably an Inflame to give us a little bit more power. Might be tempted to take a Wild Strike for the Wound Synergy, but we don't actually have an Evolve or a Fire Breathing yet, so I think it's just crap, mostly. Let's take it in Flame. I would love a copy of Evolve, or... Something... E. These are max health sentries. I'm really not afraid, though. We got an MLA Plus. It's gonna do 30 damage. And here's several soul. MLA next turn. Take 20. Reasonable time to use the Swift Potion. Likely to draw Power Through or Immolate. Either would be good. Power Through is no wounds because of the Sever Soul. Uh, or if I draw both, I just play both. Or I could use the Attack Potion. How much damage would I need to get to kill one of them? We do 16 plus 18, 34. So I would need, with two strength, 15 damage. Pummel is four by four, that's 16. Pummel gets there, Heavy Blade gets there, most of two cost attacks get there. Oh right, I can only play one strike in Sever Soul. What am I talking about? Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, 26, okay, so that's really not likely to happen. Let's use the Swift Potion. Immolate. Get in there. Bonk. And then I'll just block one time. And because we accelerated the draw, Immolate's now in the draw pile again. We could have even drawn it right here, but didn't. 
Although, hopefully I don't take 20 next turn. Okay, take 10 is fine. Keep the attack potion for Nob. Ooh, and a preserved insect from the first elite is going to make the rest of this a lot easier. Nice. You also get a regen potion. What a great act one start so far. Shockwave, second wind is here. Oh my goodness. I think this is an amazing second wind. Since I have power through already. I'm also going to go get my water. I'll be right back. All right, let's take a second win. Um, give me a, another sentries fight in the next node. Close enough. This is a three enemy fight that rewards us with a relic. A corridor full of hypnotizing colored mushrooms. And they'll all instantly die if I draw immolate. Which is currently a big if. Go ahead and use the regen potion. We might get another potion from this fight. Rather than inflaming, I'm just going to second wind it away for block. Strike the one that's buffing. But we're mostly just trying to draw Immolate here. We have failed to draw Emily. Bummer. So, now we take less damage when vulnerable for the rest of the run. We're offered a barricade? What? Hello? I don't think I want a barricade. I think we're going to want a barricade by Act 3. It's pickable. And it absolutely could pay off later. We don't have Feel No Pain yet, but we've got all run to find one. And currently we have two cards that can delete this thing for when we don't want to play it. The Sever Soul and the Second Wind. Canine Mancer, thanks for seven months. Let's do it. We can carry a curse. Or three. Oh, it's actually going to play in this fight, too. Amazing. Actually doing stuff immediately. You know what? Put the defend on top. No, wait. Put the power through on top. He's so tiny. The Blunketing. The Strunkening. Starting this fight with 30 block is definitely nice. That's just good. Use the Sever Soul over the second win. Second win is 20... No, 15 block? 15 block. I'll take it. It's another full attack we prevent. Oh, this deck is cool. And we get another pocket watch. What a blessed, blessed run. Now all... This is way better than the last pocket watch, actually, because with so many of the cards we're, we're using in this deck are already... Um, basing on how many cards we have in our hand, the second win in particular, uh, it's going to make this dead weight inconsequential, and we don't have a zero cost miracle like the last run. What the? F 
And then this card reward is also here. The mods are getting too obvious. Gotta tone it down a bit. Bruh. Could go at double immolate, although with a pocket watch, you really only need one. I really like disarm going into hexaghost, actually. <clears throat> and I also like the pairing of disarm and barricade. Although uppercut is nice. We've already got two, actually three, two cost attacks. Let's take a disarm. Disarm also lets me pick brimstone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Gambling Chip continues the barrage of absurdly good relics, letting us discard cards on turn one to shape our opening hand. Um, the combination of Gambling Chip Pocket Watch means there's no turn where we don't draw an absurd number of cards. Pocket Watch covers every turn except turn one. Gambling Chip covers turn one. It's pretty ideal. use an attack potion here. <clears throat> we have a card left over for pocket watch, uh, and with a little bit more damage, we'll kill next turn, right? Um, actually, wait, do I just guaranteed kill? Because we draw eight cards, which means we're guaranteed to get Warcry or Immolate, and Warcry finds Immolate. Immolate will do 42, Strike will do, actually more than that, Immolate will do 45, Strike will deal 12. So yes, we just kill without potion use. Guaranteed. No need to overcomplicate it. Prayer Wheel means we get two card rewards from every regular combat we face. And we could take a Spot Weakness or a Flame Barrier for block. I really like Flame Barrier as a card. And in a situation where we've got Barricade Pocket Watch, I like it even more. Spot Weakness for Strength Gain is acceptable. We've already got an Inflame though, and not that many Strength Scaling attacks. Let's take a Flame Barrier. Do I still want to go this way? I think we should take a combat over an event because we have two card rewards. Also gives me a little bit more money for this shop. The event could be a removal or a relic or something though, which would be pretty nice. But I think it's Foolish to turn down double card rewards. Two more card rewards means that much more chance of finding a Dark Embrace or a Feel No Pain. Uh, and once we get those, like, this this run is broken if we can just assemble that synergy. So I think we should just be looking at mass card rewards so we can essentially force the build that we want to play with. Just disarm Flame? We could just bonk him. Go... Actually, we have extra health. We have exactly three, so Immolate Defend is pretty good. Let's do that. It's the perfect amount of health. Get him, Seversoul. Good work. Body slam. Ooh. Second disarm. I mean, I think we can wait on body slam. Actually, we're going to be offered more of these. We have we have prayer wheel, and we'd like a body slam plus. Currently, the body slam is not a very good source of damage. In an ideal functioning barricade nonsense deck, it will be, but that's not. Currently true. But if it's the only one ever in the seed, then I will regret skipping this one, but I think it's really likely that we actually see an upgraded one later, um, or that I get offered one in a more appropriate situation. Triggered's okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a way to permanently remove attacks, which we currently lack, but it's not good enough. And I don't have an upgrade for it. I'm going to be upgrading what? Barricade? No, I might take a Sneko Eye. Um, I don't need to upgrade it in Flame, do I? What am I upgrading? Hmm, Flame Barrier. I don't think I need to upgrade Disarm. We've got two of them. I really don't think I need to upgrade them yet. 
or maybe even ever. Unless Brimstone. No. Just another second wind and an abacus. Hmm. Interesting. Abacus. Actually, no. <clears throat> it's never abacus here. You know why it's never abacus here, Twitch chat? Because it's always panic button. Look at this card. Gain 30 block. Sure, I can't gain block from cards for... It's actually one turn. One turn of downside on this lying, lying card. The two turns includes the turn you play it, aka the turn you just gain 30 block. With barricade, we can keep the extra block. Yeah, where's the entrench at? Mr. Bruno, why hasn't the Ironclad published any books? He's got writer's block. I think a second wind upgrade is pretty good too. I do think I'm playing Barricade against Hexaghost. That seems pretty likely. We might go a long time in the Hexaghost fight. We can we can really mess with this boss. We have Disarms to counter the Strength Gain and Second Wind Sever Soul to counter the Burns along with Pocket Watch. So we outscale Hexaghost here. That's really funny. So yeah, let's get our, our Primo blocks upgraded then. I'm going to upgrade the Flame Barrier for the return damage and probably the Second Wind for the block. It's time to spin the wheel. What do you got for me, kid? Naturally. Wait, that actually helps us for Hexaghost. Thank you. <laughs> He's doing his best to help. That's the draw I wanted turn one, honestly. Yeah, just give me barricade turn one. Um, Cycle these two. And I can put anything on top that I want. Let's do the disarm here. Don't want to destroy Panic Button. I'd rather play it. So is this like def hmm. I have to second wind after Panic Button if I want to delete these defends, which means they don't get destroyed for any value. I think it's just Panic Button Strike Strike then. Or Panic Button Strike, rather. Actually, no. Do draw five next turn. Go bash. Flame Barrier will play next turn. Okay, we'll just go and flame disarm strike. Like I said, we can take this fight really slowly. Because we're hilariously good at it. Like, truly hilariously good at it. I'll even add my own burns sometimes. Just for funsies, really. Wow, that's a draw. Get a flame barrier here. Sure. Panic Button Duke Pot does not give 60 block. That's correct, the Duke. Even worse, it causes you to be unable to block for four turns because the debuff is also doubled. 
be very careful with that. Do not echo form panic button. Do not. All right, get rid of all this garbage. Oh, this is Inferno turn? I wasn't even really paying any attention. Like, what? What do you think these burns are doing? They're fueling me! You're making me stronger! And this is pretty much the full deck now. We've got power through, second wind, and all the attacks, and nothing else. I'll finally play Bash, maybe? I can do this all day! Get out of here! Okay, so that is a regular burn, I was wondering. Second Inferno. You know what? Knock yourself out. Also, show to the chat that you also upgrade this burn. Ironclad is unable to upgrade his own burns, but Hexagos can do it for him. Nice try, nerd. Get severed. <laughs> wow, that was... That was one-sided. In a commanding way. Wake says, I think I've literally never seen this fight go to the third Inferno. We've done it on Defect with uh, Inserter plus Consume and Frost Orbs. I have gotten Hexagos to third and fourth Inferno. Is Juggernaut actually better than Impervious? Not without a Feel No Pain. With a Feel No Pain, yes it is. But without, no. If we count on finding the Feel No Pain, we can use it later, but that feels like a bit of dead weight. Not dead weight, however, is this barricade. I think this barricade is actually going to pay off like very fast. I mean, it already did in Hexaghost, but it will continue to, especially if we find a good boss relic. How does Hexa scale in the long term? Hexa both increases the strength by uh, two or three per cycle with the once per... The, the fourth flame is a strength buff out of the six. And then, of course, by continually adding burns to the deck, the longer the fight goes on, the more burns there will be. So unless you're able to do what we just did and delete each of those burns as they arrive, they'll accumulate and you'll suffer greatly. The other way, I guess, would be to add more cards than Hexagos does. So you could have, like, four or five Hello Worlds just flooding the deck with new cards so that the burns were never a problem because you always had new cards. That's a fun one. I hadn't thought about that. Regardless, I'm taking Impervious here. Now we do wish we had Body Slam, but that's whatever. I'm going to keep these potions for Act 2. They're very, very good at bonking an Elite. Hmm. This is actually a really bad pyramid deck, right? Generally speaking, uh, Runic Pyramid and Pocket Watch don't actually like each other that much. And there's a, a fundamental reason for that. Pocket Watch requires you to play three or fewer cards and lets you draw eight if you do that. But with Pyramid retaining all of the cards in your hand, you can only draw as many cards as you play. Because you're capped at 10 cards and you never discard them. So you can't play only three cards, but then have eight free open spots in your hand at the end of turn, except for turn one. You can do it on turn one, and then that's nice. But after turn one, this is no longer a synergy you can actually meaningfully use and quickly becomes problematic. 
With all these big heavy cards, I think more energy is great, actually. Copy to here shouldn't be that problematic. We barely took damage in all of Act 1. We actually slaughtered everything. And quite frankly, with the relics we have, I think we're going to continue to do that. So this should be pretty easy to make use of. I think we'll also want to then upgrade the barricade. That allows us to just casually play it. Um, whenever we want to. And I love the elite layout here in this act. Oof, that's an early shop, though. Maybe this one? Hmm. I have to go to this shop? That's kind of lame. <laughs> hmm. Because I'd like to do whatever this is. This looks great. Upgrade, elite, upgrade, elite, upgrade. Fight champ. Uh, I guess we'd like to take a number of combats for bonus card awards. Now that... Um, now that we're in Act 2, combats have a chance of dropping upgraded cards, so looking at tons and tons and tons of card awards is actually very, very good for us. I don't necessarily want to path through too many fires. What cards do we currently have that need upgrades, or would really like upgrades? Power through, impervious, panic button, barrack... Okay, well, actually, a lot of cards. All right, then. Greetings, bird nerds. Who would win between Hexaghost and Decca? Just Decca on his own, huh? Decca would win. I don't know how you'd simulate the burns and dazes for either of them. If you ignore them, Decca certainly wins. Just by virtue of the persistent damage output. Deck has 250 health. It takes Hexaghost forever to do 250 damage to anybody. Hexaghost does not pack much of a punch until... It's entirely too late. Although Deck is only going to do about an average of 12 per turn. Maybe it won't be, Deck. Hmm. Oh, if you count the divider scaling, though, oh, yeah. I hadn't considered that. Dual wield. Anything interesting to dual wield here? No. Headbutt? Headbutt's powerful. Headbutt for the entrench that I'm going to want to take. What about an evolve? This does seem like an evolve deck. I'm going to be really honest. It doesn't need an upgrade, because we're doing pocket watch things. Um, but it definitely gets us a few extra draws in, in key moments. Exhume here could get a second copy of a Disarm. Or Impervious or Panic Button, actually. That's pretty powerful. Go in Rome, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I want to try this Evolve. I could avoid the first upgrade if I felt like I wanted to. Let's just take Combats. Combats and upgrades, combats and upgrades. Feels like the way to go. Show me those bonus card wards, please. Let's see, if I do in flame second wind, then I take a little bit, but that's fine. Also headbutt flame barrier there, that would have been fun. This is just impervious simulate, just impervious simulate. No need to overcomplicate that. Now I die. Maybe get a three so we draw enough to kill this guy now. Get him, Sever Soul. Your time to shine. Easy. More ways to make statuses. Another copy of Headbutt. All these unupgraded cards. I think we're just skipping. We're sifting through the chaff here to find good stuff. By virtue of large numbers. We don't need to take filler cards because we're already dominating everything. So mostly we'll be ignoring unupgraded or non-rare or non-feel-no-pain cards. Please draw a better hand than this. That's more like it. 
You, no more attacking. It's illegal now. What did I just say? I should probably be hitting the Centurion so that I don't make these two go ballistic here. Play Immolate next turn. and clear. More shrugs. So many shrugs. So many shrugs. I wish I hadn't taken so many shrugs. No, I don't want any of that. This is likely to get me a feel no pain though. We're at full health, so there's no reason not to look at 20 cards. There's the feel no pain. Yep, I'm going to click on that. Especially since we would take two or three or eight copies of it. Might even be what we upgrade. Fun options. What I won't be upgrading is Evolve. Evolve can suck it. Let's do Barricade first. Snaky plant. Barricade, you're out. Not today. Not in this fight. Just, uh, actually wait. It's a good turn to panic button, actually. We're gonna go evolve, immolate, headbutt, panic button. Blade Plus, not that good. Offering. That's a winner. That is certainly a winner. We're going to be increasingly moving away from the pocket watch and starting to form sort of a, an exhaust card spam thing. Dark Embrace, Seeing Red, uh, Bloodletting, just generating our own energy and playing an arbitrary amount of cards rather than being subject to any sort of human limitation. Could even upgrade offering. That's tempting. Many, many good upgrades here. Go panic button next. Vortex Curse says, how does Busted Crown affect card rewards? Does it pick one out of three possible cards to show you, or does it show only one card? Let's see. So only one card is generated. If that makes sense. Um... And that, can, and that can cause some really big problems. For example, if you look at three cards at the same time, for example, in your first card of war, you can see Pummel Strike, Anger, Close Line, or three Ironclad Commons. And those have to be three different cards. With Busted Crown, the way seating works, the first card you're offered will be a Pummel Strike. But then the second combat could offer you just another one pummel strike. So you can get offered the same card back to back effectively in card picks, which can be really nasty for Busted Crown, just only seeing one card. How's it going, Faley? We had a, a very, very fun Watcher run that absolutely clobbered everything. Um, and this Ironclad seems to be going the same way. Uh, I don't know that I can properly articulate the amount of power we're at. Actually, yes, I can. We outscaled Hexaghost. We just removed every burn and then barricaded for a hundred block. It was great. Strabalier, thanks for 26 months of support. Pay some health for a tome. Ooh. Yes, please. There's some really fun stuff we can get here. There are three possible tomes. Each costs you 21 health. The one we get is the Necronomicon. The first two-cost attack played each turn 
is played twice. And you know what that means, Twitch chat? It means several soul. I think I do upgrade this feel no pain now. Although arguably we could we could really benefit from an upgrade on the Sever Soul. If it's getting double, but a double immolate is just gonna crush everything anyway. Let's upgrade the feel no pain. And yeah, that only applies to attacks, not any two-cost cards. So we're not doubling barricade, sadly. Please give me the good card. Dang it. Alright, that's fine. I'll just draw 10 next turn. And everything will be fine. No need to overcomplicate this. Draw 10. Got him. Get Ginger, preventing us from becoming weakened. Fairy in a bottle, letting us die. And an Entrench, letting us double our block with a barricade. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Twitch chat. It just happened. We just got and upgraded Entrench. Please draw me many cards. Eight cards? Six cards. Hmm. That's a lot of cards to lose. Kill one of them. That's correct. I can only kill one of them. Hmm. Already used the puzzle. Interesting draw. We'll always get attack next turn. That's not necessarily even a bad thing, because, like, I've got the Omega blocks. If I don't kill one, uh, I'm also going to be super weak and frail, pretty much no matter what I do here. I think I would like to draw more cards. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to disarm you. I'm going to end the turn. Just frail, not weak. Got it. Perfect. So, fun fact, I actually don't care at all about whatever you're doing. I am the block lord. Yes, and Trench works after Panic Button, fun fact. Or blammed. Get cheap removals at the shop. Offered pretty mediocre stuff. Yet another reason panic button is amazing there. You saw me snap pick that panic button in this shop over basically any, any other option because with, with barricade, panic button is absurd. Just truly absurd. Alright, I would like body slam now. Or champ. We're gonna go 999 block against champ and there's nothing he can do about it. A thing. Uh, hmm. Let's put this on top. So, power through, defend, panic button entrench. And then, like this. 
this. How about this. Alright, we don't need to play Offering in this fight. I think we've got it sorted. Can't get rid of the Necronomicers, but you can sure try. And in fact, you just get a repeatable, uh, exhaustible card if you do that. It returns. Again, just like Hexagos, we kind of kill Champ at our leisure here. Take our sweet time. Will we ever see a second body slam? Scholars have debated this subject for ages. Come up with no clear solution. Who needs second wind when I have the almighty Sever Soul, the clearly superior card? Nice execute, nerd. Let me just go back to 999 block after you do your nonsense. Pathetic. Puny weakling. Get out of here. GG. GG, Mr. Champ. Hmm. Reaper Berserk Brutality. I don't like any of these. Steady ticking away of our health. Given how long we can prolong fights, I think the self damage brutality is actually quite a problem. Likewise, well, I could could take Reaper with Coffee Dripper. Uh, with Necronomicon, actually, that's a huge heal. Okay, I'll take a Reaper. Reaper Necronomicon. And we do have at least one strength gain, so this is heal 14 per enemy in the fight. Yeah, I'll take it. I will take it. And Evolve is kind of crap now. Well, not that bad. Is there any reason not to immediately click this Neko Eye? I would generally say that um, Busted Crown with Prayer Wheel is worse than normal. Think of it as seeing, instead of six cards per regular enemy, we only see two. Which is losing out on four cards rather than losing out on two cards. So argue quite, quite considerably worse, I would say. Snack Hawaii is particularly good with Gambling Chip. Now, why Necronomicon is weird, actually. Some of our attacks will be doubled, but it's no longer based on the base card. So that's fun. Sure, we'll make this a Sneko Deco. And we can get, like, super cheap removals here if I want. Or I can do lots of elites this way. We did get most of the important upgrades down. I wouldn't mind upgrading one or both disarms. I wouldn't mind upgrading power throw, but everything else is optional here. We can now double strikes, or we can simply remove all the strikes, which I really like doing here. I only get one elite if I do that, but I get to remove three freaking strikes. And I get to take a whole bunch of regular fights for like mega card rewards here. So we're skipping out on relics if we do this, and just mass looking at card rewards with high upgrade chance, and mass removing strikes. I like that. We have the money to remove three strikes. Yes! Smiling Mask says they're only 50 gold each, so it's only 150 gold to remove all three. Might have some weirder early turns, though. This is a bit odd. Although Impervious is perfectly blocking. We'll just do Impervious Disarm. Disarm the Spiker. 
I'm not afraid. On turns we activate the pocket watch, we draw 10 cards. Which is absurd. Take the thorns and then heal, right? I think I'm just gonna play the Immolate and uh, get the heal health back at, in a different fight. Sounds good to me. Armaments plus another feel no pain. Get in the deck. Get in the deck, Twitch chat. That's what we're looking for. Pains to not feel. No feelings ever. That's the law. Second win gives 21 block. And I can still play this. Sentinel gives energy if exhausted. I think that's actually pretty decent here. Dog Barker, thank you so much for the generous gifted sub. But the odds of finding Body Slam at this point still quite high. It's still a common card, and we get... Uh, let's just take a quick look here. So we get to see... Four attacks in two shops, plus... Six cards per fight. So six... Twelve... Eighteen... Twenty-four... Thirty. Thirty cards... To look for Body Slam. Plus three more from there. Hit this and another shop. So thirty cards plus six attacks... To find Body Slam. I'd say the odds of that are probably at least 50%. Hand of Greed, interesting. Can just barely afford a Hand of Greed card remove. Although I might actually be unable to afford another removal if I do that, though. Yeah, they'd be, like, just barely winning out, and I'd have to micromanage it every fight. Let us proceed. Casual 110 block on turn one, like you do. Like you do. So, we can't gain block from direct cards with panic button active, so the impervious blocks for zero here. But, you are still allowed to block from feel no pain. So we can still gain seven block per card from Sever Soul here, or a second win here, rather. All the block. Your pathetic attacks are useless. I am only growing stronger with time. Wind. Double tap. Hmm. Let's skip it all. Ah. Clues line. Discovery could be body slam? That's pretty funny. We actually don't have weaken in the deck currently. Ah. So on sale clothesline is actually kind of decent. 
We can then barricade our nice together, definitely. All right, you're cheap enough. You may join. Do I want a discovery here? Discovery can be all sorts of fun things. The Necrotomicon and double tax stack. Yes, uh, two doublings equals a tripling. So you get three card plays. Well, by doing another run after this one, I think a silent run is quite likely. You're not. Sure, let's add a discovery. This fight's a bit tricky. This opponent could try to curse us, although I suppose there are worse things. Oh yeah, just a casual bonus impervious. No biggie. Far no curse attempts. I'm watching you. I really don't want to hit it more than necessary. She didn't want to hit it there either. As every time we attack it, the rerolled intent could be a the curse intent. Get rid of all this. Yeah, that one. That's the one we don't want. Fortunately, it can't do the same intent twice in a row, so all we have to do is reserve one attack so that we can counteract any attempted nonsense. Cool. Navigated the fight successfully. Your Arma Hemo, Metallicize, Arma, Reckless Charge. Metallicize is cute. I really don't think three or four per turn is going to make much of a difference when we're doing um, 999 block, so I'm not going to pick it because it could slow us down by being in the deck. We are going to keep looking at card rewards. Maybe we can, uh, we could kill Transient if we had Body Slam, but we don't actually have Body Slam yet. So we'll simply block Transient, I guess. No feel no pains, huh? That'll have to do. Hmm. Yeah, that'll have to do. Three cost offering, surely not worth it. comfortable fight. Glad we had all that block reserved or I would have taken one damage there. Second wind power through armaments or pummel strike, combust headbutt. 
That ain't it either. Actually, a shocking paucity of upgraded cards, considering how many we've looked at. The Dreamcatcher to offer us more, except it's worthless. So, even better that we have to take it the Sapphire Key. Maybe there's a Body Slam here. There's an Exhume here. And a Regret here. And a Regret here. And an Uppercut here. Could have been another Regret there. I might have gotten Cursed. Instead, I get an Exhume. And an Uppercut. And I don't want to Bash. Exhume. Good job, Discovery. Feel no... Oh, oh my goodness. Feel no pain plus or in trench. And this one is a thing. I think we go double in trench. Double in trench, Sneko Eye, Barricade seems probably pretty good. Keep removing things that aren't in trench. We've seen so many armaments. It's uh, it's truly absurd. Too many armaments. I almost think to call them harmaments at this point because of the harm they're doing to this run by their repeated appearance. Bye bye. Ironclad, you should probably consider taking a break. You look exhausted. Double headbutt for the S super entrenching. Entrench, entrench. Block like a champ. Toxic Egg, a little bit late. Finally, Dark Embrace shows up. I mean, that seems exceptional. Giving us card draw whenever a card is exhausted. Uh, alongside the Second Wind or Sever Soul, we could do some truly busted things here. Still missing the Body Slam, though. This Reaper has been pr basically worthless. That's pretty funny. these free cards. It's like I played Corruption. Except I did not play Corruption. Second win plus number two. And a feel no pain, sure. Let's do one more of each. Because the deck wasn't blocky exhaust synergy enough. Oh, Dex Potion over Speed Potion for prolonged bonus in uh, the heart fight. Not that I think it's going to matter at all. Um, and we are allowed to upgrade. In fact, we're actually required to upgrade a card. I literally have no other option. Let's upgrade one of these feel no pains. Yep, and yep, and this one? Or this one? Or this one? Yep. 
Yep. Yep. Barely matters. I'm blocking now. And I'm deleting all this. That was cool. Can I zoom the panic button? All right, time eater, your move. Good luck. Turn. Truly a sad. Bonk. Let's get rid of all this nonsense. Just need one inch wrench, that's all. Slimes. GG. All right, time eater hopelessly dispatched. Awakened one, not going to fare any better, I assure you. Flame in this fight. Ah, heck it. No fun if the boss doesn't do some damage, right? That's a little scary. Lose one of my two entrenches. that might be playing this. Could just do impervious panic button here. Let's see what Discovery has. The Body Slam! Is what impervious has. Uh, it has. The Body Slam.
Oh yeah, we're also playing in late, so... Mildly annoying bird. Wow. Two, three, two, three, three, three. Hello? Oh, I can get back my uh, entrench. Welcome. Welcome back. Also, Necronomicon Body Slam. Amazing. Necronati Slam. Kabonk. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread. Give me further out the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? Of this blonk. The Blonkin Bonk. What am I upgrading here? Discovery, genuinely? Make our own body slam. I think double unupgraded disarm is still fine. We just never need to upgrade these. Well, it turns out we did, in fact, not see any body slams on our way to the top of the spire, That, other than the one that was foretold, that I definitely would have appreciated taking. And yet, I don't think it's going to make one bit of difference for this deck, whether we actually have a body slam or not. Our foes stand no chance against us. So entrench then second wind? Yeah. Entrench then reaper then second wind. Or actually it should have been reaper then entrench second wind. Missed some block there. All right, 114 block turn one, sound good? Sounds good to me. Sure. That sounds nice. Boop. repeatedly delete everything that I've ever had over and over again. Infinite. Kunai, the uh, Sever Soul Necronomicus Infinite. Easy. Easy, easy. Get offered a Kunai for even more blocking, I guess. Liquid Memories? Maybe better than a Dexterity Potion? Definitely, because we can get back an Entrench. Liquid Memories on Entrench is broken as hell. Do I take a Seeing Red? Probably not. 
Probably not. Oh my goodness. What is this turn one draw, Twitch chat? Look at this, look at this. It's beautiful. Oh, and it gets even better. You'll love to see it. I'm just got an exclamation point win right now. I can't blame you. Uh, we got to perfect the heart, though. We can draw off the Centennial Puzzle with the Offering. I feel like this has to be a perfect fight. According to the... The rules of Spire. Or else, what really separates us from the animals, you know? Alright, 101 block. Let's go. Heart. The Blunkening. Turn two, by the way. And then I guess this happens? Hmm. Um, I pass. I guess. Good talk. Some vulnerable. Give me a kunai, Brock. Yeah. I like it. Wow, that was a lot of card draw. What? Oh, the evolves. That's fine. Double. Head box. Silver soul things? No. Struggling a little bit with some of these draws. But it's not like we uh, don't have all the time in the world, you know? Seems like we're doing plenty of damage. If only we had that body slam, you know? Just imagine where we'd be. Just imagine. GG Twitch chat. GG, what a wild run. Be free, my fairy friend. Get ye gone. To a life of freedom. GG. Gotta say, I do regret a little bit not taking the Juggernaut. I think that would have made uh, a, an extra hilarious run. Instead of the body slam, that that's the other option we could have taken is the the juggernaut. But we didn't need none of it. GG, just play the big attacks over and over again with the funny book. Get them. Get them. GG.
and soul. Shalar. GG. Yeah, that certainly certainly didn't feel like Ascension 20. That was that was easy the whole way through, just like the Watcher run, and that's partly because of Pocket Watch really just carrying the run on its shoulders. Zero. <laughs> Have you ever seen this kind of summary for a Hexaghost fight? Like, what? Zero damage, 17 turns, with 70 hit points. Yeah, that, that alone was worth the highlight. I'm going to mark this one for highlighting. Hmm. Hey there, Wolf Ramite. Downfall is something that we play with uh, occasional frequency here on the channel. There will definitely be more downfall runs. Uh, you can actually catch some Watcher... Uh, da. Not Watcher. Hermit runs. You can get some Hermit runs on the YouTube. So if you're interested in, uh, in seeing me play that character, uh, just search Hermit and you should be able to find it on the, on the Baylor YouTube there. But yeah, that character is super fun. I think Hermit's really well done. Watcher. But have I done any Kermit runs? How did Hexagos die? Slowly and painfully. Is how. Um, essentially what happened was we had Barricade and Second Wind and Pocket Watch. So I drew eight cards per turn, which was second wind and four burns. Play second wind. The burns are gone, and now I have 50 block. And that's how the Hexaghost fight went. Just removed all the burns and then bashed Hexaghost repeatedly with se several soul. Just a, a, a simply ridiculous run from start to finish. A real, real joy to be able to play this one. So, maybe the next one will be similarly broken, or maybe we'll have a hard one ahead of us. Only one way to find out, and that's to stay tuned in. But first, it's break time. I'll be back in a few minutes when I return. The silent. Don't go nowhere, folks.
All right, everybody. Your patience has allowed me to return with coffee in hand. As I think the silence should be played properly. Hoping for a grand finale deck? Me too. Two. Let's see. Is our title updated? I think it is. 315 sounds right. How do I take my coffee with a little bit of maple syrup? Tingsha? But what about the elite snipe? There is no elite snipe. There is only misery. And Guardian. Guardian at the end of the act always makes me happy on the silent. Oh, and whatever no, I'm Canadian, exactly. Is that an Immo Latte? Sure is. Deus Poker says, what is Elite Snipe? So commonly, a uh, common piece of terminology in Slay the Spire refers to using this starting blessing from the whale, uh, which will be one of your only two options if you don't make it to the end of Act 1. On your previous run with the same character, you'll only get two choices here, and one of them will be this one. Enemies in your next three combats have one health, also known as Niao's Lament. If you manage to make an elite fight one of your first three combats, it's even possible to have uh, two of your first three combats be elites. Actually, there is a way to snipe this one. I didn't notice that originally, but there is a path here. You get event, 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 then this would be your third combat. First combat, second combat, third combat. Getting an elite with only one hit point is basically like getting a free relic. You take no damage, you don't need any cards to do it. It's just free, and it helps you get started in Act 1, which can be really nice. Northern Minnesota. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's honorary Canadian. You guys definitely speak with an Ontario accent, practically. If you call it Soda Pop, you're a Canadian. You know? <laughs> Almost. Is it possible to snipe the Act 1 boss with Wing Boots, asks Ferez. It is indeed possible to snipe the Act 1 boss, yes. You don't necessarily need Wing Boots um, or Juzu Bracelet. And if you utilize glitches, you can do it to the heart, apparently. That's right, I am Grum, born in Edmonton, is yours truly. So I hail from the Great White North. I do like me some rare relics. I don't necessarily need 99 gold. I'm thinking we probably do something like... You could always opt out of the Elite, I guess, right? Maybe go to the shop? Probably not, though. Something like this, but not necessarily exactly this. It could even take more combats to start. I guess that depends on what the Rare Relic is. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. It is a blessed day, Twitch chat. We are starting with the Tough Bandages, one of my favorite relics on the silent, one that enables a whole build, essentially. Discard build. Anytime we discard cards, we gain block. And that means so many different cards from Silent's common pool just got a lot better. I think that means I do want to go five combats, because right now we want to, we want to get the good stuff. Which is to say, calculated gambles, and acrobatics, and tacticians, and stuff like that. Look at this tough bandage, is immediately providing us with value. Can I actually full block this, or do I need to take one? It feels more reasonable to take one here. Let's just take the one. Try not taking this one, though. Correct choice. I think. Yeah, that worked out. Cool. 
We do want to consider some area damage early. I'm also eyeing a backflip as something that will be good with tough bandages type cards. Um, but we do want to make sure we're getting damage added, especially a way to deal with the... Since I'm going five combats in a row here, I need a way to deal with the uh, Gremlin Gang and the Slime Gang. So I think I'm going to take a Dagger Spray to make that a little bit less uh, threatening. But where's Gamba? How's it going, Kuro? Blade Dance is not Gamba, but does do decent damage. I mean, it's better than a Bane or a Dodge and Roll, surely. Lance Bruce has been struggling with a defect lately and on A20, and I feel like I can never get a good block game going in Act 2. Are you taking Auto Shields, Equilibrium, even Leap, Charge, Battery, Steam Barrier? These are all cards that work pretty well in Act 2, and I would recommend taking a bit more if you're not. Especially if you see them upgraded or if you can upgrade them. Um, they can be really effective block engines. Of course, Frost and Focus is also a way to get there, but it, it, it rarely lines up to let you do it on turn one, which is where those aforementioned block cards come in. Endless Agony actually works with discard stuff reasonably well. Offers us a little bit more immediate damage to get us through these next couple fights. Uh, I'm also even happier that we went for five combats because there's no potions here yet. And I would really like some potions if I'm going to fight an elite. I am going to find an elite, right? Please tell me yes. Guess we block once here. I don't think he's ever getting away, especially since he attacked this turn. Still no potion. Bot is dead. Uh oh. How's it going, Merle? <clears throat> yeah, bandages start into 80% potion drop rate into uh, no discard cards. So we're trying to figure out what to do. Tough bandages are a rare relic. One of the best. Maybe a flying knee? Hmm. This, uh, this is increasingly looking impossible to beat. So, we can path around the elite. If I do so now, I get to keep the rest site. But if I look at another floor... We lose the rest site. Have to go this way. What would I even upgrade? I guess a uh, dagger spray upgrade's pretty good. I don't necessarily need more relics when I have tough bandages. Assuming the tough bandages start to do something at some point. And if I go around the elite, I don't have to take the flying knee. So I'm also effectively getting a card removal. Okay, let's just bail out now. Let's say RNG has been exceedingly unfavorable in terms of combat rewards for the first four fights. Except for gold, which has been exactly average. This was, of course, Golden Idol, which is completely fine. I'll take more money for the rest of the run, quite happily. 
Anawa, thanks for 40 nice months of support. So Sneaky Strike is an attack that definitely ends up being good eventually, but only eventually. As unfortunately we just haven't gotten the cards to make it work yet. This is a particularly rude encounter as well. We would have lost a lot of health here. I mean, we still will. Mm, let's see. 22 damage. This is 12. This is 8. It's a lot easier to kill if I strike it once. And it will attack us next turn. I think I should just take 8 and strike here. So that we're much more likely to kill the slime. And avoid this 10. Unfortunately, we draw 15 damage, so... Nope, not to dare. It's a bummer. Okay, I can look at the strike next turn. Or that, that works too. Well. That was awful. We're offered a grand finale that I can't use. Jeez. Good news is we got a potion, finally. Fighting Guardian? I'm wondering if we take a deadly poison here. Helps us uh, answer the boss a little bit, which we'll need an answer for. And it might help us against the elite, too. We do have to fight at least one elite here. And we don't have a lot of time left to prepare for it. I'd love to take Finale, but it's just not going to work. Yet. And, and we're, like, in immediate threat of dying if we don't get something to, that actually works. Cohesively, in one way or another. Oof. Dagger throw, at least, is decent. Really wish we could buy Terror. Attack Potion is also actually pretty good in terms of getting us out of the next fight. Actually, Attack Potion is pretty stellar. Let's take that. I can buy Piercing Whale if I want to. I do want to. I do want to. Fan, also pretty good. Blocking for three attacks played. That's a relic that goes with the cards we actually have, rather than the cards we want to take. So that's nice. And I think with these supplemental block sources... Am I upgrading Neutralize here? Or do we have to upgrade Deadly Poison for Legavulin? Legavulin's pretty hard if I don't upgrade Deadly. Okay, we'll upgrade Deadly Poison. Still could end up in really bad shape here. The timing of these events, man. Only there was a world where we could have done that, but then actually even that would have led to... Uh... Yeah, that would have gone badly too. <laughs> We've had the regret curse for like the, the slime and slaver fight. No, thank you. Just a really super cursed seed overall. Alright, who are we fighting? It is Lagavulin, so I'm happy we upgraded Deadly Poison. I did draw the Deadly Poison on turn one, which is a little annoying. Um, we pretty much have to play this, I think, so we might as well just go open here. Probably using Dex Potion, but we'll see what the actual draws are. At least we lose the Ascender's Bane there. So this is 11 plus 5 plus 4. We're actually full blocking already here. No need for a potion. Look at that. 
And this is pretty good. Defend, defend, piercing whale. We do save four with the dex potion. Dex potion will be much better than the guardian fight. Let's use the attack potion in this fight. Dex potion for guardian. Although, that was aspirational. This is the most damage this turn. Hmm. Well, I guess the dex potion wouldn't have helped here. Fair enough. That's what resting's for. Yeah, successfully preserved the dex potion. Err, wait. Oh no, we didn't. Dang it. Go to one. And I get a blue candle. Great. Just what I wanted. I don't even think I take a uh, willing plans here. I'm gonna go backflip. Backflip sleep. Sleeping once isn't even enough to beat Guardian. That's so sad. But it might be enough to beat this thing. Better than a defend. So yeah, if I hadn't rested, we'd just die. To this freaking nerd. Alright, so we deal 13. I'm going to bring it to 36. So I play one strike here. Actually, no, I just don't play this either. This went pretty well. Regen potion. Backstab. Backstab with the ornamental fan. That'll help us for an act two. We still have yet to see anything that says discard on it, but uh, I think we might just get out of the act alive with an upgrade even. Probably upgrading blade dance. Neutralize is pretty good too. Could even consider upgrading backflip. Backflip upgrade will be really good in Act 2. Blade Dance upgrade sometimes gives us 4 block, though. I'll upgrade the Blade Dance. Bot token. I'm gonna drink this now. Definitely might need it. Explosive potion next turn would guarantee, I think, the transform. Not quite, actually, if I draw zero damage, but we don't draw zero damage. Be kind of rare to do that. Play this last. Take one to deal three, not on my watch. Actually, I could have neutralized and defended. Excuse me. I was wrong. Take one this time. Eh. Oh, the 
this poison sure isn't stacking particularly quickly, huh? Had we truly bottom decked the deadly poison there, we might have been in real trouble. Thankfully not. Raw pile is still kind of bad. But at least the poison is now accumulating in an official sense. Oof. God, that might be our death, actually. Let's see. Yep. Now I am exactly dead to this. GG. Just a super cursed act. No shame in losing this one. I, I don't know what it would have took to stay alive, but I certainly didn't have it. GG. GG. Yeah, the silent streak ends to that. Well, again, no, no hard feelings about that. Sometimes the Spire wants to kill you, and it was very, very obvious today. And this run, the Spire sure wanted to kill me. That's fine. Let's go again. That was really tough. <laughs> yeah, do I do it again? Take 15 for a random rare? Do I think going to the shop might have helped? No, because our starting bonus was to lose all the money. We had no money. We actually, like ruined ourselves because we traded all of our money for a rare relic that we ne never saw any cards that worked with. It's pretty funny. Would neutralize upgrade have helped? Yes. I think that might have helped me get out of the Guardian fight alive. Maybe. It's not going to help me though if I get if I draw zero defense on the the 8x2 turn. Taking the well-laid plans over the backflip might have done it. But yeah, just just super cursed. I do not... Uh, there's a forced elite, actually, so taking damage as part of our starting bonus is pretty bad. I think I'd rather take 100 gold into an early shop here, try to gear up for an elite. Because as you can see, relying on your combat rewards is silent to prepare for you for elite combats only works some of the time, not every time. So, let's take some money into the store. It seems we've fallen behind on damage somehow. Not really sure how this happened, but I don't like it. Oof, and we're one... It's a 55 health cultist, too. I'm gonna take... Yeah, I'm gonna take six more. Well, five more. Because... Otherwise, the draws are gonna kill us. Ah. Guardian again. Or Sterly Elite. I'll take a skip over a Bane. No, I'll take a Bane. Could pick up a poison card in the shop, maybe. Bane's not too bad. When is Infinite Blades ever good? With Dead Branch, it, it can be. I think that's maybe the only situation. Ultimately, it's just way worse than Blade Dance is the core problem with it. Sure. Acrobatics, Dagger Thrower, you last run. Dash is very, very nice for early uh, elites. So is Panic Button, actually, with um, with well laid plans. Go Dash, Acrobatics, Panic Button. That's kind of curious. I like that. Otherwise, we're going like Dash. I can't do Dash Footwork Remove. No, I can't. Sure, let's do this this triad. Uh, 
And then take more combats. Everyone panic. Nobody panic. So already the panic button has saved us health. We now have a terror, making physical attacks do way more damage. I already work at this bane a little bit. Although I wouldn't mind picking up a few wounds. Uh, if we get any stronger here, we might even be able to take on the burning elite. Let's keep taking fights. Adventures in bot development with failing. Discard this, keep the panic button. Which is better between Cloak and Dagger or Blade Dance? Generally speaking, I would say Blade Dance gives you more, more value for the money. Okay, do that. Still keeping panic button. But a uh, cloak and can be can be really good if you have uh, the kunai, for example. Because it's block and attack that work with each other. But without any interesting synergies, I really don't like cloak and dagger very much. I do like a slice here, actually. It's it's very mundane, but with our card draw from acrobatics, we do want a zero cost card. With the bonus damage from terror, we do want a decent attack. So sure, I'll take a slice. And now with two good potions, I'm feeling more and more confident that we can take the Burning Elite. Not two Elites, though. Just the Burning Elite. Upgrade maybe Terror here? I like the Terror upgrade a lot. I also like the Dash and Well-Aid Plans upgrades. But I think we'll get Terror upgraded first here. buying ourselves a little bit more energy. I'm already heavily disincentivized to take a snack OI. I don't think I would, would take a snack OI over basically anything going out of Act 1 here, so I'm, I'm not too upset by such a thing. Well, that is certainly a attack pattern, huh? Looks like I just panic button on this turn, try to kill the Acid Slime next turn. do this. Keep the strike. And then if the Jawworm attacks, so be it. It does, but we can kill this one. And ultimately, only taking seven from this fight is a pretty good outcome. We could have used a potion, but I'm happy with attack potion, um, flex potion especially. Do I need a dagger spray? Eh. Crippling clad works with Bane. Kind of unwieldy. I guess with the flex potion, the dagger spray is pretty good. Sure. Gives me a really convincing answer to super sentries. Yeah, which is what we're fighting. Okay, well... If it lines up like that, I'm just going to do it. Just kill the middle one this turn. Usually not my approach here, but it looks great. More fights. I might even use the attack potion. So we go neutralize and terror on the one we want to kill. Okay, I'm going to use this too. Cool. Yeah, tear the middle one.
Good fight. Get a strike dummy. Cards containing the text strike deal more damage. And I do like a backflip, especially since I've already got one acrobatics. Get our card draw online so we can take energy cards. If only it was Dagger Spray Strike, and then in case you were worried that I'd bloon all my potions at once, we get guaranteed replenishment from the White Beast Statue at a rate of one per fight. Perfect. Simply perfect. I summon the pyramid. Upgrade the well laid plans. You really nice for Guardian. Let's do it. Hello. I don't remember if you're allowed to do that twice in a row. I don't really care. Unfortunately, Strike is better than Dagger Spray now. I feel like a dummy for taking this card. Forty-seven minus thirteen, thirty-four. That would split. Strike Dummy actively bad in that moment. Dang it! Curse you, Strike Dummy. Acro looks for Slice, I guess. Neutralize. Dagger Spray is kind of nice, but I'm going to keep Dash. Okay. Clean fight. Oh yeah, I've got uh, two Retain as well. I noticed... Footwork versus Bullet Time. Deck's already got some really good dexterity scaling cards, so I do like a footwork a lot. We do have a lot of card draw potential, though. Actually, with acrobatics and backflip, Bullet Time is kind of a really big deal. Hmm. And I just lost a silent run, too. Let's try the more experimental pick Bullet Time. Cannot draw any more cards, but reduce the cost of everything in my hand to be free. To make bullet time actually good, we need to be able to play a draw card first. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the bullet time immediately here. And this is going to let the deck operate with some interesting options for boss relic. Come on. Draw first. Go strike, strike. Unplay these. It's fine. I got a panic button. You don't need any any fear from the knob. Drawing all three strikes would be a kill. Thirteen times three is thirty-nine. And I'm not drawing any block, so I'll play this. There's no reason not to. All right, good luck. 50-50 odds to get all three. Yeah. Nicely dispatched. Bag of prep with more cards turn one. Going to make this bullet time quite exceptional. Tactician. Wouldn't mind a dagger throw, but I'm actually okay not taking any of this. With Strike Dummy, we don't really need more attacks. Like, Dagger Throw is just a strike with draw one, discard one on it. We don't need that. What is with the encounters in this act, though? Good lord. I'm gonna get away with my money. Not on my watch, kid. This could just play three attacks and panic button. Always getting attacked next turn, though. Um, probably better to defend, defend, dagger spray, huh? Could acrobatics. I should use one potion. Actually, let's acro first. 
Perfect. Okay, that's a more comfortable turn one. I am content with that. Now this nerd's gonna get away with my money. Yeah. Actually, maybe not. Well done, Silent. Double terror. Don't really want a poison stab. It would turn the bane on, but meh. Not good enough as a card. Let us upgrade what? Probably acrobatics because of bullet time now. Let's get more card draw. We can do some very silly things with boule time. Assuming we do draw it. Seems to be a large assumption. Seems like the Guardian fights well in hand, though. We got a pretty favorable draw order there. Let's keep that. This will be useful next turn. Keep bullet time neutralized. Strikes transforms. We've got an excellent turn set up next turn. Just acro into bullet time. use a potion here. There's, we do get one back, but better to have more options at the end of the fight. By being able to look at three and choose the best two. So for example, if this potion is worse than these two potions, I can just leave this on the ground. Adrenaline Nightmare Tools. Deck definitely likes an Adrenaline. Nightmare is a bit weird here. We don't have any good Nightmare targets. Draw one, discard one with Tools is not bad. Would I take Bark over a fourth energy? Yes. Especially if I take this Adrenaline. We're really setting ourselves up to not need an Energy Relic at all. Although I would take Hovering Kite quite happily. Nightmare bullet time. They make each other free. How powerful. Let's lose the power pot. Okay, so I can take Calling Bell here, is what I'm saying to myself. I don't need Coffee Dripper or Busted Crown. And I should take this. I think that's true. I think that we've set ourselves up to to want non-energy options from our boss relics. 
Three additional relics, one common, one uncommon, one rare. Could be quite a boost of power. Or a long-term investment. We'll see. What do we get? Puzzle Fan Turnip. Turnip definitely helps a lot in Act 2 with the blocking game. Fan's not too bad, especially with bullet time. And puzzle is more card draw. I, I like it. I think we got some pretty good stuff there. A lot of rest sites on the far left here. An interesting path. No elites, many upgrades. It's not what we want here. We do want some elites. We also want maybe a card removal or something. Let's see fighting these elites later on. If only the tough bandages were here. So I'm thinking going to this store. Something like this. One, two, three reasonable elites. We have the option to skip one of them. Either the... Yeah, we can skip the third one. If you want to, or go this way if we're not feeling confident at all. A little hard to play well aid plans with only three energy, though. Unless we get bullet time, in which case we can just play everything. Thanks, bullet time. Full block or draw? Full block. We're also immune to frail. Seems good. These two. Do you make me regret my choices? Still full block, though. Still immune to frail. Alright, so thanks to the power of bullet time and turnip, we just slaughtered the avocado without even using a potion. Kind of forgot that I was going to get one. I think I'll take the Cunning Potion over the Attack Potion. This is a more predictable damage add. Doing exactly 18. And I'm allowed to split the damage up amongst multiple targets. Do I want another Acrobatics? I think that I probably do, actually. Want one more. One event. It's a fight. Survivor, discard one of these, then draw more. Here's the damage. Okay, no liquid memories gets a kill or anything. Still immune to frail, too. I wanted to take exactly one damage here. Let's take exactly two then. Or again, I could just liquid memories. If I dash, I'm going to full block, and then this is my hand, and that's bad. Twenty, uh, 41 next turn. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. So we do this. Pick two, draw three. Eighteen plus eighteen is thirty six, right? Nine plus nine plus six times three. Is 36. Yes. That 
says plus on it, and I still have a turnip. Look at that. Block cards are nice. Sometimes. Keep the acro. Quite frankly, keep the strike too. There's bullet times and then their hills. That's a big number, friend. That might have to be my panic button. Or I like distilled chaos or something. Actually, liquid memories on dash should be sufficient, right? Let's do that. Masterful Stab Plus. It's free as long as we haven't taken damage, which is... Eh. The problem is, uh, with Centennial Puzzle, I kind of want to take damage sometimes, so... I think I want that card. I don't think so. So I'm feeling actually more confident against Elites, based on how the fights so far have gone. I'm still going to go the current route here, even though we could go this way. Go here. Grand Finale is way better than it was when we saw it last run. Let's do it. Let's make this a finale run. It's also Sneaky Strike, which is pretty useful with Strike Dummy and two Acrobatics. Is Bullet Time Finisher a good thing? Eh, not really. Particularly. Vinegar and Honey say, Real Estate says, How do you set up not having any cards in the draw pile? You have to draw all of them exactly. And the best way to do that is to have many different cards that can draw various numbers, like an Acrobatics Plus and an Unacrobatics and a Backflip, for example, would let us draw two or three or four as needed to set up the draw pile. And uh, well, heck, that's actually exactly what we have. The other missing piece of the puzzle, have a way to keep the grand finale in your hand from turn to turn, which we also have. Ah. Last piece of the puzzle, remove your cards. All of them. Hmm, I'm gonna remove one defend because with strike dummy and ah. ornamental fan, the strikes are pretty decent. Could take a leg sweep here, but I think just making the deck smaller is a good idea. Correct boss is collector. Yes, making the deck smaller is the right idea. Oh yeah, I should upgrade Bane, not strike, excuse me. <laughs> uh, remove rather. Remove Bane, not strike. May have goofed slightly there. Here's well laid plans. Perfect block. The reblocketing. So, how do you set up Grand Finale? Currently, there are nine cards in our draw pile. We draw five at the start of turn, and Acrobatics Plus draws four. So, all we need to do here is full block this turn, and then next turn, play Acrobatics Plus. That puts Grand Finale into our hand guaranteed with zero cards in the draw pile, leading to one grand finale. Predator Plus could also set up draws. The fact that it's upgraded makes me want to consider it here. Oh, we have bullet time? Yeah, I'm gonna add this. That's great with bullet time. Upgrade the finale? I actually don't want to upgrade the second acrobatics because I really like a one draw three, one draw four. Now that we have the finale. Still lacking weakened, so neutralize upgrade is pretty good, actually, especially for collector. 
Okay, let's upgrade Neutralize. And then probably Finale soon, too. Events over combat? Yes. Com events could be removals. And this one is, in fact, a removal. All right, Bane. You're gone. Happy to pay 100 gold for that. All right, 18 cards in the draw pile. Three turns and... Draw... Three or... Um... Two turns and draw eight. This is draw two, this is draw two, this is draw two. Let's assume that instead. Ooh, but we're not playing that. I can retain it, though. Predator, Strike, Panic Button. We're drawing seven cards next turn. There are seven cards in the draw pile. Grand Finale! No thanks, Infinite Blades. Not today. Energy Potion could be okay. I like the current potions, though. Boot thingy here. This is block turn two, one of my favorite thingies to find. Very, very helpful in these fights in particular. Um, unless this happens turn one. Hmm. Well, the acrobatics plus and bullet time certainly make this a commanding turn one for us. Really enjoying this bullet time so far. All right, what am I not playing? Both Kremlins are dead. So I just need to block for 18. Which means I don't need any defense. I can even retain a defense. It's the least overkill way to kill you. Dash Strike Strike is 28, Predator Strike is 29. Guess we don't need Dodge and Roll, we can just retain both of these. That was full block. Cool, good turn one. What am I talking about? Great turn one, amazing turn one, stupidly good turn one. And now Finale set up. You can see we're doing it very reliably actually. Run finale! Now we have a pocket watch. And if I want one, a piercing well. Piercing well is pretty good. I do want one. Yes. I do want a piercing well. Keep the current potions. Dramatic music intensifies. Base trader. We haven't taken the blue key, so I'm just going to take the money from you. If we take the face trade at this point of the run, having passed the second mid-act chest, and we get the in-loss hungry face, which makes the next, che next chest empty, then we'll be unable to get our blue key and we'll fail the run by virtue of not getting to act four. So we must not take the swap there. It is forbidden. Do I distill chaos now or after acrobatics? Acrobatics is only going to draw three. Hmm. I 
Can the pot play grand finale? Only if there are no cards in the draw pile. You're not allowed to cheat it into play under other conditions, even by trying to force play it. Alright, I'm just gonna distill chaos and see what happens here. Oh, we tried to play grand finale, and it didn't work. Fair enough. Well, that is a little unfortunate. I guess I'll just Predator and draw 10 cards next turn, and then play Bullet Time or whatever. Although we won't actually get that much done. Bummer. I also then Block Potion. I suppose that I do. Definitely not the greatest start to this fight. At least we didn't top deck the panic button, you know? Probably put the vulnerables somewhere else. 19 is exactly dash strike. Let's hit you. Shuffle the deck? Sure. And now a final demonstration of ways to set up Grand Finale. First, you need to be below 37 health. That's good enough. So, if I play only three cards with Pocket Watch... Then next turn we draw eight cards, leaving three cards in the draw pile. You'll note none of the cards in the draw pile draw three. However, you can't draw more cards than there are available spots in the hand. So with a card like Acrobatics, which says draw four, discard one, if we play it when there are three spaces in the hand, which does include um, the acrobatics. It leaves the hand as soon as you play it. So, currently if I play acrobatics, we'll draw two. If I play one other card, then acrobatics. My hand is too full to draw four cards, so we draw three. And now I grand finale. Ooh, dead branch. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Dead branch. Dead branch backstab. Hmm. Dead Ranch doesn't make the first finale any harder. Only the sub second and subsequent finales. Quite frankly, generating random cards is pretty sweet. I'm gonna do it. So every time we exhaust a card, we get a new random card. Which may or may not be a very good thing for us. All depends on whether bullet time's in your hand. That's all. Don't get to keep this? Bummer. Okay. And we're not being attacked next turn. That's cool. 
correct? Wait, yes, we are. But here we have panic button. We're not being attacked next turn. Here we go. We want weaken. Sucker Punch Plus is here. I'm good. I am okay. Not having access to that particular service. Double your plans. Double your fun. Let's just go plans, plans, set up the Acro Plus. Keep the Acro Minus. Don't keep either of those defends, because we need to make room in our hands. Ule time. So good to see you. Okay, we don't need Panic Button, yeah? Not on this turn, we don't. You draw one card? Please? Actually, I'm gonna keep that piercing whale. That'd be ridiculous. Hmm. Problems abound. You mean to frail, though, at least. Just weak. Gun bullet time once again. Can't quite kill the fat gremlin, huh? Hm. block. Need to draw five. I can do that. Can I? I mean, just by not We can do fancy stuff. That'll work. So backflip draws two. Discarding and backflipping is insufficient here. To, uh, to grand finale. But if I liquid memories to put a card into my hand, doesn't even matter what the card is, and then backflip, I only draw one. funny. Second bullet time. Interesting. Could take an upgrade this bullet time. Is that good? Don't know if that's any good. Skip all that. Alright, let's upgrade Finale so it kills Collector easier. Let's do that. Draw 10 next turn. Don't mind if I do. This is draw 9. Uh, 
Uh, I think we just want to go like plans, defend, backflip. Keep acro finale. Oh, right. Slight miscalculation was made. Fortunately, the dead branch dagger throw has corrected it for me. I can also just play Adrenaline now, since there's only one spot in hand. This is fine, though. Hmm. Sufficient. Twelve cards in the draw pile. Let's make it eight cards in the draw pile. Let's make it zero cards in the draw pile. Grand finale. GG. Ooh, a Gambler's Brew is super helpful. What about a Wraith Form, Malaise, or Alchemize? Those are all also pretty absurd here. Probably want the Wraith Form. Maybe? Hmm. Alchemize with White Beast Statue feels a little bit redundant. It's still useful to generate more, more potions. If I had a potion belt, I'd go in on that, but I don't. Yeah, probably the three best rares. I agree, Merle. All three are good at, for different reasons. Since I'm probably not taking more energy, I don't really like an X cost card. It doesn't do the bullet time thing. Wraith form sure is nice with pocket watch too. Let's just go Wraith form. Very happy with that. And we're taking more energy, which I'm also pretty happy about. Um, Philo's Stone seems not too bad. Dome's definitely awkward. I don't like Dome with Wraith Form, generally speaking. And I certainly don't like Dome with Piercing Well. Um, losing out on upgrades with Fusion Hammer means no upgrading the Wraith Form. And that's also a bit of a no-no. Although, honestly, Wraith Form upgrade doesn't matter for Heart, funnily enough. You only want two adjacent turns to be intangible, but it lets you play it a turn earlier. There's a lot of reasons to want the additional thing. So I'm going to go with the Philo Stone. Makes enemies do more damage to us, which could be a little annoying, but the extra energy is grand. Lots of ways to get through the act. We might as well get the upgrades while we still can. Upgrade Wraith Form. Maybe Adrenaline could get upgraded. And I also like purging a card, or maybe two cards at shops. Probably just one, actually, because we do get another shop in Act 4. So I'm thinking something like this. Get three elites, which should be comparatively easy. A few upgrades. To recall, upgrade Wraith Form. Wraith Form here, recall here. We can decide what we want to do with these two. Alright, I'm playing that Wraith Form, right? Might as well. Get him. Oh, there's no reason to play the Wraith Form. You're dead on turn one. Got him. Sneaky Strike is back, but I don't think we want one. Hmm. Hmm. 
Dodge a roll Wraith form? Sure. Actually, I didn't even need the dodge roll because of the boot. One boot thingy. Coming right up. Acro. Bummer. So, same trick as before, Acro draws three. There's only two spots in hand when I play it. So we draw two and can finale. Concentrate plus, discard cards to gain more energy. Interesting. I'm gonna try that. I think that's got some potential. Especially with the dead branch. Especially, especially with the dead branch. Just keep the wreath form. I guess finale? Hmm. Not sure about that. If I'm playing wraith form, I don't need to kill the exploder. Actually. So there's five cards in the draw pile. As long as I don't use the pocket watch, we can guarantee a finale next turn. So I have to play four cards, at least. Deliberately deactivate pocket watch, retain grand finale. And then play grand finale. Concentrate plus is not bad. I could upgrade this with the remaining fire. Sure. We do get offered 999 gold. Though I'd be stuck with the curses for way too long. Or we could fight a boss for a rare relic, seeming a lot more reasonable here. Don't need the full heal. Or the upgrade all, rather. Actually, the upgrade all is pretty good. But, uh, we'll fight the boss. Really spicy. And nice. Nicey spicy. Couple bouncing flask is fun here. Especially with boule time. Get him, boule time. You got this. Draw six. Actually, I could use the gambler's bird to do it, but it's not necessary. Actually, what am I talking about? We just draw into the backflip. Finale! Easy.
Thought I'd change Strike Dummy to be actually good? I think Strike Dummy is actually not that bad for most characters, but I wouldn't... Uh, to make this better, all I would do is just add the Strike text to the name of a couple important cards. Not sure which ones exactly would be best candidates, but just tweak which cards are boosted very slightly and you can achieve it that way. Orichalcum. I could take Orichalcum. Do I want to? Not really. It's nice with the Wraithworm, kind of. Not good enough, though. Grand Finale Strike. Dig Strike. That's what I can do with that last fire. Yeah, it's good on Ironclad, partially because Ironclad has so many cards that say Strike. The other classes don't have as many. Okay. I see how it is. Don't need to play this Wraithworm here. So I shan't. PK? Um, if I draw into... Well, eight plans. We just energy potion for it. But I didn't. Just want to stay at three cards here. That's the nemesis for you. Trying to draw either the Wraith Form or the Piercing Whale to negate damage here. Or neither. Or neither is an option too, apparently. This is very spooky. This seems like a pretty opportune time to gamble for seven, though. We get a finale and a concentrate wraith form. Seems pretty good to me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just kill. Okay, that feels a lot safer. Love the dupe pot for the heart. Probably try to keep that all the way to the end. Could take another predator here for more card draw. Let's do it. Setup was also decent, actually. Oh, Memori is pretty unlikely to do anything. We just saw the 999 gold behind us, unfortunately. Would have been nice to get that a bit earlier, but... Oh well, what can you do? Button grand finale. Okay, might just play Wraith Form here. I 
didn't get either acrobatics, so we whiff the finale this time around. Bummer. Hmm. Okay, so just keep this concentrate. Draw a lot of cords next turn. Panic button. All right, let's just end this in style. With the finale. Bottled lightning. Bottle Adrenaline? We could bottle the bullet time to always happen in our opening hand. That's kind of a big deal. Let's bottle the bullet time. Makes our turn one super strong. Upgrade this Acrobatics. Or we can dig up a Relic. Let's dig. Ooh. That one might be pretty good, actually. Ice cream allows us to conserve energy from turn to turn. Now, we don't exactly have an X cost card, but uh, it's a lot of use for that, I assure you. I'm also sure I can get really good use out of a frozen eye when I've got a grand finale. Now we know the exact order of the cards in the draw pile, meaning I know for sure whether my finale is going to brick or not. It can also help me draw towards key block cards at certain moments. Do I want to add a footwork? Our basic blocks are not going to do anything without some dexterity here. So I do like a footwork for that reason. Master strategy is not bad. One time draw three, exhaust, get a new card. Really need more answers to heart. Take a footwork here. Third whale? Three whales might be too many. That's a keeper. And I see you can block debuffs, including the debuff of the Wraith form. Violence is curious. It's kind of like card draw. We're not doing very many debuffs. Don't think transmutation is good. Take a violence, though. Magnetism is a really fun card. I can confirm this. Does some cool stuff. For surezies. Gonna keep the extra energy here, so let's go Acro to discard this. Strike, strike, dash, predator, predator. Draw nine here. Positively no making me weak.
Draw one, though. Well, that draws, but not the right amount. Got plenty of time too with the Wraith Form. Uh, I think I'll use the panic button this turn, draw nine. And then I should be. We know the draw pile in order, so we know we're drawing into acrobatics. I just remembered I have that. Um, I think my grand finale's not where it's at here. Finalier. Ornithopter is a consistent source of healing. That's going to be appreciated. Well, actually, not a consistent source of healing. That's going to be 10 health, 15 health. <laughs> so what do I want for Spear and Shield? We don't get any more potions except these. I think I like the energy over the Swift Potion. So we'll keep these two. Great footwork here. We're done digging. We got the one relic that was going to be good. And there is no need for more. That's the law. Let's we'll add three to hand. That's good. Just do that. Storm of Steel Dead Branch is rather cute. I think next turn I'll just keep Acro Storm of Steel. And then just do whatever I want from there. All right, Adrenaline and Terror are next. So that's what I draw with Backflip. Finale is coming up. 13 cards in the draw pile. next turn looks pretty miserable. Don't want to spend a potion. I might just use the Storm of Steel, make a whole bunch of garbage. Actually, that seems pretty risky. Pawn review. Seems kind of suicidal, actually. So we're gonna draw these two. Whale keep. So 
I have to play at least six cards per turn for after image to pay off. I don't think I'm doing that all that often. Four cards in the draw pile. Sure, it's Boulet time. Oh, that's gonna eat my artifact, actually. Kinda forgot about that interaction. Um. In that case, just keep these. How are we gonna kill the Awakened One? She seems like a surprisingly challenging endeavor. Slowly. Or with Nightmare Grand Finale, actually. That's also an option. So this pretty much has to be blocked by Panic Button. Double Storm of Steel. So I have to make my finale. Hmm. I won't be able to line that up though. Alright, fine. Random garbage go! Nightmare Catalyst? With no poison? It's a fun option. Back to that stuff later. To me. Random bullshit go. King of Cheese. Set that up. Burst the Wraith Form. Or Burst the Storm of Steel? <laughs> Go. Go. Do it. Surely that was correct. Keep the tactician. Okay. 
Wow, those did not turn into good cards. At least we got weakened. Ouch. Wow, not a single one of those was any good. Yikes. Keep this. I guess I can keep this finale. We draw five backflip, backflip. Yeah, I can keep this finale. But my health. Shit, is the next card I'm drawing. Hmm. Nightmare Deflect, unironically. Sure. There's 53 cards in the draw pile. Okay, well, finale's not happening. That's what I learned. Terrifying. 53 cards. Found the free reform, so our troubles are over now. Get obnoxious fumes. You got this. Many after images is too many. Yes, Nightmare Catalyst, the obvious victory condition. Oh wait, actually Storm of Steel. And Catalyst, and Storm of Steel, GG. All right, next up these two, who are probably a little easier than our previous foe, since they don't scale whenever I play Powers or Storm of Steels. Would they, after all? I'm gonna go for Deca first here, uh, Donu first here.
53 cards. Pretty funny. Um, can I block this normally? Yes. way to do it. Okay. So if I play one acrobatics, there will only be two attacks in the draw pile. Then violence will draw two. Acrobatic straws the last three. Can grand finale properly. quite liking these random setups. They've been very convenient. Let's buy ourselves some time with Wraith Forearm. of steel like a freaking maniac again? Maybe. Probably want to draw deeper into the draw file first, although I don't want to get to the grand finale, so no. I'll play Predator Storm of Steel, and that'll be that. Wee! Venom? Sure. Riddle with holes in Venom. You betcha. King Betcha. I don't actually think I can land the penalty, though. Attacking me for full power. I think I noticed that. Okay, panic button for next turn. Let's just bullet time all this. GG. 
Cheer. All right, we've successfully made it to Act 4. We've got good potions. We've got amazing relics. And we have got Storm of Steel on our side, or at least the Storm of Steel created by the Dead Branch. Don't know if this is <laughs> what we saw is better or worse than the deck would be performing without the Dead Branch, but I sure like it. Of that, there is no question. I like it. Meal ticket heals me to full, so final upgrade or rest. I actually like the Panacea upgrade because we have both bullet time and ooh, and souvenir uh, and wraith form to deal with. Sorry, both uh, wraith form and panic button to deal with. Clockwork souvenir is a third artifact. That's pretty good. Netta, thank you so much for 30 months. Happy three metric years. Problem is clockwork souvenir gets eaten by bullet time turn one for the most part. So I don't actually think that's good. Considering another footwork here. Yeah, I can bullet time and still draw cards. That's also true. Which is maybe useful. Just gonna cut a card. Taker spray is actually worse than the strikes. Do I want to swap the energy potion for a power potion? Do I want an outmaneuver with ice cream? The answer to both of these questions is no. Seems like a pretty good turn one. Adrenaline is the top card. There is nothing in my hand that draws, though. Prefer to Wraith form next turn? Good panic button this turn to block the damage. Or we can just take the damage, heal five with a potion. Taking ten. Yeah, that's not likely to matter. Okay. Let's do it this way then. Uh, this first. You die first. Backflip. Well, that changes everything. Oh no, the encoder. Alright, this time it is on my end, Twitch chat. Something wrong with the internet tubes. Felt like you were dying? Well, that's the... That's the feeling of having your bitrate squeezed down to one-sixth of its usual. Oh, now we're at a third. Okay, that's better. We need a bigger tube. So. Drone Acro. Panacea next turn. So we can block the debuff of the Wraith form even better. So I think I still go panic button here. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm gonna backflip. Bullet time, nightmare on the adrenaline. Create another wraith form, just in case you thought I didn't have enough wraith forms. Guess I'll play this for free then. Uh, we can't draw any more cards. But that is fine. These, these two. 
Wouldn't you know it? My hand is full. And I got another wraith form. How does that keep happening? Dang it, Storm of Steel. Can't you see that I want you here? Can't finale if I gamble? Oh well. I get to do so many more beautiful things. Build your own Storm of Steel. Burst. Nightmare. Targeting Shiv. Targeting Shiv. The power. The sheer power. And then Phantasmal Killer, so they each do six damage. Incredible. And then, do it again. And then, Murder Town. Get spiked on, nerd. Kunai. Every time we play three attacks in a turn, gain dexterity. And a regen potion instead of the energy potion. I'll take the energy potion. Pretty funny. Absurd, they say. I'll show you absurd. All right. Wraith Form's close to the top. Panacea not far behind. Can we? draw to that. What I'd particularly like to do is Panacea Plus. And then duplicate Wraith Form. Looks like I can do that, as long as I make my turn one not too excessive here. Got Centennial as well. Gotta be mindful of that. I think the best way to do that is just defend Predator this turn. Forget all this fancy schmancy with the uh, playing the attacks and such. Just want to defend Predator. Okay. That's going to be the line I choose. We're essentially just going to buy ourselves so much time in this fight. We're doing that to draw 10 cards here with Pocket Watch, and we know exactly which 10 they are. Fun fact, you can watch the statuses get added to the draw pile with Frozen Eye. Here, 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 here. Gonna show up. The rest of the draw pile stays exactly in order, so we're gonna draw to the Wraith form here. Oh yeah, we gave you Philosopher's Stone. Well, that was a choice I made. Except it's not gonna matter, cause... Is why is this? Panacea 
Oh my god. <laughs> um. Hmm. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I might dupe the foot work. Just be intangible for six turns and then have 15 dexterity afterwards. While we figure out how to kill this thing. Or I could use Nightmare to duplicate an attack card of some kind. Actually don't do that much damage. We'll get new cards. We'll get new cards. Turns a piercing whale. Take exactly one. We draw a predator here. I don't want to do that yet. Uh, yeah. Let's actually just save the energy. Draw more. Okay, there's finale. We have to land our finales now. Lots of cards in the draw pile, so that could be tricky. Ooh, that helps. Five skills. Echo neutralize, strike. Yeah, now just play it first. there for no reason, no good reason. Also fine. Maybe you wanted to play a whale there, actually. draw two more next turn, right? Because we're drawing seven, so if I keep finale bullet time, we can do a lot of stuff. So we go back foot first, then finale escape plan. Now we can bullet time if we want to, and I do. It's pretty 
Thanks, that turn. Let's keep piercing whale defense. I've got 16 dexterity, so blocking this thing, not really a problem, even though it does this much damage. That is kind of scary, actually. Surely tools won't mess me up. Draw nine. Times close to the top here. Let's just acro into bullet time. Could acro into acro into uh, acro into backflip into bullet time. That's the way. And then predator acrobatics gets me the finale next turn. Looks good to me, Twitch chat. I use the panic button here. Oh no! Ah! Freaking tools of the trade. I knew it. I knew that was gonna bungle me. Ah! Tools, why? Shoot. Alright, we got slimes. Bouncing flask. Hmm. Gotta keep these both. Good luck to me. use both whales next turn. It's going to be a 9 by 15. Good lord. It's a big number. That looks a bit more reasonable. Defend a dodge roll. Won't be weak, though. I'm going to need both pe going to need both piercing whales. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, we draw nine. I can just draw six, right? So, drawing nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Be nine. One, two, three, four, five. Just keep this. Okay. That's the way to do it. Just had to remember tools the trade properly this time. Whoops. Thank you, dagger throw. And let's go ahead and bullet time grand finale. Plus a whole bunch more besides. strength to the heart. GG, sir. Get choked on. GG.
Now there is a finale deck for you. Very cool. GG, everyone. Grand finale, dead branch, go. That was uh, that was weird. I think that would have been a lot more straightforward if I'd actually skipped the dead branch, just tried to make it a finale deck. But I have no complaints about what happened. That was that was fun. It was very fun. GG. Yeah, just the Shiv Poison Finale discard exhaust archetype with first pick Bane that we then later removed. Random BS go. Yabousa, thanks for the year and a half. GG's. The rapid fire randomness. Those Storm of Steels were they're so worth it, just for the Dead Branch nonsense. 50 card draw pile in the Awakened one, also super worth it. GG. Has it been done? The finale sleeps. And so shall I. GG, folks. GG. Detailed breakdown of why I chose each card randomly generated for me by the branch. Clicky clicky. That's the detailed breakdown for you. <laughs> card appear, card go click. Silent Wind Run. Seventeen turn awake in one fight. It was ridiculous. This was ridiculous. Shout out to Panacea Dupe Pot Wraith Form for the heart fight, by the way. That was wild. Just buy me all the time to do the dead branch thing. Barely took any damage that fight because of how well it went. That was good. And yet, Secret MVP, Turnip. Turnip was huge in this run. Blocking Frail left, right, and center made Act 2 so much more comfortable. Shelled Parasite, perfect because of Turnip. Spheric Guardian, barely took any damage because of Turnip. And then we just started murdering everything. Snake Plant, also easy. Good stuff. Well, I think that's all the Spire I've got in me. I want to play some uh, Brotato. Brotato? To unwind today. I'm really liking the Brotato lately. Do I think Master Reality is valuable with Dead Branch? Yes, absolutely. Um, for anyone not familiar, that's the Watcher Power that upgrades any cards generated mid-combat. And this is one of my favorite combos with the Dead Branch is this. C upgrade any card created mid-combat. That includes cards from Dead Branch. So every card you exhaust get a random upgraded card in your hand. It's pretty dang strong. And it can even chain react. Like you'll get, uh, assume you're playing Watcher because you got Master Reality. You'll get upgraded Tranquilities and Crescendos that can make energy for you. Upgraded Collects sometimes. Upgraded Vaults. Lots of hot nonsense. Potato, Brutato, let's call the whole thing off. They're playing the Alpha Patch. So, they added a Beta Patch branch that you could sign, that you can opt into to get, like, experimental patch notes, but then they made a separate extra branch, the Alpha branch, to test experimental changes for the beta branch? I'm not sure why they've chosen to do that. Exactly. Very odd. Just update the beta version with the experimental changes. That's the whole point. But, I don't know. I'll just be playing with the uh, the beta branch. So, without the, the most alpha experimental changes. But we still get the, uh, the max HP scaling. I'm not too committed to keeping exactly on top of the whatever the patch is in Brotato. I imagine a, a lot of things will change over time with this game. When your staging branch has a staging branch. But man, that was that was such a fun one. We had really, really good runs today. Ignore whatever happened here. This was a sad, sad time. But this silent run was great. Just great.
Waiting for Sigma Branch to match your mindset. But what about the Ligma Branch? I think that's the one you really ought to get onto. All right, where's Potato? There you are. It's updating. Ooh, was there a patch to the beta version? Guess we'll see. A <laughs> great use of your vacation week, right, Mr. Baconito? Let's also put the face cam over here for Brotato. The so folks can see my stats. So if you've not seen it before, Brotato is a Survivors-esque roguelite experience. Goal is to survive 20 waves as one of many different potato characters, wielding up to six different weapons at the same time. Ligma is an anagram of Gmail. That's exactly right. And that's that's who's been perpetuating that joke of the internet the whole time. It's been Google secretly marketing their services to us all. So keep that in mind next time you want to use it. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. When I return, potato action. Don't go nowhere, folks.
All right, everybody, thank you so much for waiting. Let's play some Bertato. So, I do have all the characters unlocked now. You get a different unlock for winning with each character. So I think what I want to do is just play random characters with characters we haven't gotten a win on and uh, try to unlock some new items. I think we missed an exclamation point win for that last run. Let me check. You might be right. You are correct. Thank you. The knight. More melee damage for every point of armor we have. Can't equip range weapons. Can only equip tier two weapons or above. Less attack speed modifications, less harvesting modifications. This character is all about having large amounts of armor. I'm going to start him out with a spear. I actually rather like the spear. And we're just going to be playing on Danger 1, trying to get the unlock for winning with these characters. Before I try going for Danger 5 wins with lots of people. So in Bertato, there's 20 waves you got to survive through. Every wave... Um, enemies will spawn in from every direction, as well as occasionally trees, which drop uh, resources and item crates. At the end of each round, we... Hmm. Oh, they buffed Baby Elephant. 20% chance. Sure. 20% chance to deal 10% of our luck as damage to a random enemy when we pick up a material. Sure. So the thing we want most on this character is armor. Would also like luck at this point. I can actually see going range. Could see going range being interesting as well. I'll just grab five attack speed for now. Get ourselves kind of started here. Rock gives us more armor and is another primitive weapon. Tier 2 or above. So no Tier 1 weapons. Interesting. I think I misread that originally. Sure, give me some more max health. Usually in Bertato, you want to spend your early money on uh, maxing out your weapons. Getting up to uh, 6 or so. That way you can kill the enemies more quickly. I'll take five more attack speed. Take another rock. That gives us another point of armor from the rock itself. And then we get another point of armor for having two blunt items. So our armor goes up to eight now, which further increases our melee damage for this character. I think I want two rocks and four spears, or something similar. There's a little bit of move speed for that, but that's not too much of a problem. The way I'm looking to build, I don't think we're going to need much move speed. Is it worth it to combine weapons? It, um, usually not unless you're picking up a new weapon and going uh, up to six. Chance for burning damage. Interesting. Sure. That could lead us into going elemental here. <clears throat> so, Knight gets way less harvesting, which makes me not want to take a, a hands upgrade. Harvesting is a stat that gives us experience and materials at the end of a wave. I still want to fill out the weapon slots. I'm just going to take 15 range here. It's a small effect on our melee weapons, but it does help them. And I'll grab some luck. That'll give us a higher chance to find better items in the shop. Second Scared Sausage, very interesting. What I am gonna buy is a Ghost Flint here. We kill enough enemies with a Ghost Flint, we'll gain bonus attack speed permanently. And there's another spear. Let's lock that in for next round. Almost want to take Toxic Sludge, because we do have that chance for burning damage. 
bit of luck in the spear, though. So our goal is to get at least 18 kills with the dagger. That way we'll get a 1% attack speed up permanently. We'll hear a little bloop sound if it works. There it was. Counteract our negative move speed with a speed level up here. We're doing decently on max health for now. And if we continue to pick up more primitive items... Get the bonus XP. If we continue to pick up more primitive items, um, our max health will continue to go up. Torch is technically a primitive item, too. Yeah, I would definitely call this a sort of a spiritual successor to Vampire Survivors, and a really good one at that. I like how it evolves the decision-making space a lot. Vampire Survivors, every time you level up, you're being offered a choice of three, but so often in that game, the choice you're making ends up being inconsequential. You just take everything anyway, eventually. So it's really about the order you get them in. Whereas in Potato, you have to make real choices about uh, what to take and what to not take. That's cool. All right, well, currently everything is getting massacred. Three elemental damage. I'm going to take this as a sign. Hmm, I don't think Lightning Shiv is where it's at. I will invest in a better Ghost Flint. These I'll combine. Now we need to get less kills to level it up. That's just going to give us some passive scaling. 1 or 2% attack speed every wave will be pretty good, actually. Probably better than percent damage, although our percent damage is pretty low, so any increase is substantial at the moment. Ah, I'll take the percent damage. And let's get five more luck. I am allowed to reroll those, I just didn't feel the need there. Hmm. Vayner gives range and attack speed, that's kind of nice. Could take a third rock here, that'll further slow us down. I don't think I want a third rock. Helmet also slows me down, but uh, the bonus armor is probably worth it here. Go helmet banner and pay for one reroll. Mm, don't want more helmets. Okay. Shame we didn't find a weapon there. How do I unlock the 3000 materials character? I, I started a run on the saber. Saver's not the one you unlock with 3,000 materials, but it's a, a different character that starts with a piggy bank. Uh, and they were very easy to get 3,000 on. You do not have to manually attack in this game, no. It's like Vampire Survivors. There is an option to manually aim, but it actually makes the game like, way harder. I mean, both of these stats are negative, so trading one for one, one for two gets us into the positive on the HP regen, sure. And the alien eyes. No, the cooldown on this got reduced. Now it's every three seconds. That seems like a lot of damage for free. I'll take it. 
I'm also going to take the 45 range here. Although 6% speed is nice, I want these spears and melee weapons to be swinging a little bit further. Ooh, rip and tear. Enemies have a chance to explode. Scales off melee damage, which is very good for this build. Gives us a huge penalty to harvesting, though. I think I'm going to lock this item in and then re-roll through a bit. Duct tape now gives one engineering. That's cool. Still would like to find a fifth weapon. I feel like I should have bought more weapons in the early part of the run, but that's okay. So good. I don't have a uh, sponsor link or anything like that for the game. If you like it, please just buy it on Steam. It's cheap enough, only five bucks. I don't need you to get any money from your purchase. Although I'm glad to hear that I've influenced your decision making. Six melee damage is nice. Honestly, all of these are nice. This is the level 10, which means we always get a purple perk. Also decent time to get our luck up, so we have higher, uh, higher other stuff. Actually, 15 attack speed is probably better than six melee damage, now I think about it. Let's keep upping the attack speed. And we get a max tier ghost flint, or I can run double purple ghost flints. The max tier one is 1% 1 attack speed, I think, for every 12 enemies killed. We do lose a point of armor for having two of them equipped. I'm gonna try them separately for one wave, see how it goes. See if they can each separately achieve 16 kills. I bet they can. on getting uh, more health restoration. We're currently lacking that. Wow. So we're now at 29% attack speed up. That was uh, that was a lot of bonus. So we have zero HP, negative three life steal. We gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. Or I could just keep taking attack speed ups. That could also happen. More armor. Let's actually buy this rip and tear. Hey, a coupon. I could upgrade one of my rocks. Sure. Like a purple rock. Purple rock gives two max health. Cool.
wish the game gave you a breakdown by uh, weapon type like Vampire Survivors does. I'd really love to know which of the three pairs of weapons are doing the most work. I, I suspect it's the spears, but I'm not actually sure. Let's take more range, actually. Twelve dodge? Okay. Take twelve dodge. And the muscly dude. And I don't want a wrench. Wrench build on this character seems interesting. More armor? Definitely want to take more armor. Perfect. Negative on the crit chance. I've got enough max health. Let's just keep taking attack speed. Let's be bonkers. 20 range. Not much of a difference there. Ooh, bonus to luck, but I, I want more healing. Hmm. Actually, you know what? We're doing really well. I'm going to buy this piggy bank, and we're going to hold for a few waves. That's what I'm going to do. Piggy Bank gives us 20% additional materials at the start of the wave, and I, I think we can put that to our advantage here. So we seem to be dominating at the moment, and that'll continue to be true for at least a few more waves. Tried to play the Across the Obelisk. Yeah, we played a little bit of that uh, last month as our community voted game. Thought it was it's uh, it's nice, but managing four decks at the same time, if you're playing a non multiplayer anyway, is quite uh, quite taxing. And it seemed like uh, combats were similarly. Uh, really heavy on effects. Lots of status effects stacking and such from enemies, so there's a lot to take in initially. Have I tried Hades? Oh yeah, we played a ton of Hades on this channel. Hmm. Add a ghost axe to the mix. Interesting. I don't think so. I think I'm just going to keep holding Fender 1 free reroll. Power Fist 4. Well, also buy the leather vest gives us we're at 18 armor now. That's uh, how much reduction? Okay. 55 percent less damage. I think at uh, 20 you have 60 percent less damage taken.
That's right, potato satisfies my complexity needs. <laughs> Quite thoroughly. What's better than stabbing things is a six arm potato man. I mean, really. We're at negative three lifesteal, so that's not gonna do it. Nine, three more armor though? Yes, please. Bean teacher. Need some more XP. We're, we're still early enough. I think this is gonna be pretty good. I'll buy you. Lock this, re-roll. And just go. I'm getting 20% more materials here. Say compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. That's because they haven't seen these spears. Less enemies, negative harvesting, and brings our lifesteal back to neutral. Don't think I want that either. Do want more armor. Lock that and reroll. Gain 20% more materials. Now we're at 1,000. This item in general, the piggy bank, is a good way to get to 3,000 materials. I think I can even do that on this run. Gen. More armor. And sure, it's not too late for luck to be good. More armor. More armor. Alright, give me 20% more. Yeah. Let's go and mark my car. Yeah, we had some we had some really funny uh, A20 wins today. Silent Dead Branch Grand Finale was the the finisher, but there was also the world's most overpowered ironclad run to start out. Which has a, what might be my favorite Hexaghost fight of all time. Entered Hexaghost with 70 hit points. 17 turns later, we finished the fight having taken zero damage. As Ironclad. It's great. Alright, we're at 59% attack speed, 6% damage, so this is a pretty good trade. Wisdom. Wisdom gives you an initial damage penalty, but then more damage every sec every few seconds till the end of the wave. That'll be good against the boss in particular. And I'll take a banner. 
All right, last last round of holding here. We'll spend some cash after this round. Seems impossible, and yet it happened. Pretty glorious. Featuring a random Act 1 barricade that we just, like, ran with. And it was great. Minus armor, unacceptable. Um, I think at this point, HP regen is more important than the max health. It will take six more melee damage, happily. All right, so with 2,000 bucks, so if we wanted to get the 3,000 materials achievement, we could just do so by um, not spending any more money here. But we're gonna combine our ghost flints into a ghost flint four. Attack speed for every 12 enemies you kill with this. And by a power fist. 140 damage, 50% chance to explode. Cacti club. I don't have any range damage stats. Trade some more crit chance away here. Barricade gives us armor while standing still. Let's do it. Standing still build, go. I gotta know what the stats on a rock four are. Red rock. Two armor, two max health. The tankitude. Every game he gets barricade. Oh, and they just added three engineering to alloy too. So it's now three melee damage, three range damage, three engineering. Five crit chance for negative six dodge. That's pretty cool. Oh god, okay. Standing still, not necessarily advised. Even with the barricade. Got it. Duly noted. Thank you, Bean Teacher, for the knowledge. Definitely still think we need some more healing, so we're going to want to focus on that with our remaining level ups and purchases. Any way to get more regeneration, maybe more lifesteal. We can get lifesteal into a positive value. Although at negative 7%, that's not going to happen. So just as much as HP regen as we can get, essentially. And more armor, of course. Oh, speak of the devil. Max HP, HP regen, damage, speed, and luck. Beautiful item. The potato is real. Oh, and dodge. That's another way to get survivability here. 12% dodge. Double barricade? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll trade the regen there. Definitely not going to go glass cannon. This is HP regen. Scissors have high life steals. So that can give me some healing. Might trade one spear for scissors here. It's only scissors two. Upgrade our rock and our spear. Yeah. Purple rock, purple spear. One more reroll. Damage and life steal, but life steal's negative. Give me the armor. Let's see what our armor is right now. Armor 42. 74% less damage taken. Just watch out for the buffed enemies, you know? Nice. 
Sting still doesn't seem to be the most effective strat, but it does kind of work. And I can I can pause if I if I need to to take less damage. You only have to be standing still very briefly to get the benefit. Health. All right, so this is the final wave. Might as well spend all of our money here. Shmoop. Max HP and regen. I'll take it. This is also regen. Coupon first. Shmoop worm reroll. Another ghost flint four. Perfect time for alien magic. More max HP, more regen. We're up to 13 HP regen. Another Power Fist 4? Cool. Combine the spears. Double Punchy Fists. That gives us more explosion size and a bit of dodge, too. Very cool. And one little muscly dude. Sounds good to me. Alright, here we are going into the final wave. 31 armor normally, plus 12 if standing still, a third chance to dodge, and some powerful punchy fists. So you can either kill the boss, or you can survive the boss until the end of the wave to win wave 20. Yeah, I bet. That looks painful. Run one. GG. So that unlocks the Plasma Sledgehammer. Only appears at purple tier and above. 20% explosion chance. Seems cool. Yeah, he got melted. Let's go to Nimble Blunderer. All right, let's uh, let us do another random character. Like I said, we're going to do danger one runs for characters we haven't beaten. Ooh, and we get to try explore now. More trees spawn. You spawn, start with lumberjack shirt. Okay, that got added too. So normally, previously this character had uh, trees die in one hit, and then you could separately find the item that has that redundant effect. Now that you just start with the item, so you don't have to have any chance of finding it anymore. It's a slight buff and a good quality of life improvement, which we're seeing quite a few of. So, explore is faster, but so are the enemies. Bigger map, bigger pickup range, more enemies, less materials drop from enemies. Interesting. So there's less benefit to killing enemies. I still want to though. I think I'm gonna try torch start. Danger one. So the goal with this character is kill lots of trees. Harvest the materials from them rather than uh, the enemies on the map. Minus elemental damage, no. Let's get some harvesting on this character. That'll give us... Uh, this and lock in the propeller hat. And I think the wand too. Definitely want to get luck on this character. Higher luck is going to give us more chance to find item crates from uh, trees instead of the fruit pickups. Another quality of life change they made. The item crates now heal you just as much as the fruit pickups do. So you'll never have that moment of, oh, I actually needed the health, but I got an item and I didn't want the item. Weird Ghost, start the next 
wave with one health, I think not a problem for this character with lots of trees. Um, pull one more time. Luck. Give me luck. Or give me death. Yeah, I saw that healed me. That was a nice change. You still want to kill some of the enemies. 20 materials when you pick up a crate. Oh boy, we're going to find a lot of those. And we're doing elemental damage, which means the peaceful bee has no penalty. It's free for dodge for harvesting. Perfect finds. Let's, uh, let's further improve our harvesting, although 6% dodge does sound nice from a survivability point. And I'll further invest in our elemental damage a little bit. Give me another torch. Minus HP from consumables, pretty bad for this character. Don't think lifesteal is going to be it, so we'll take H the, a plant here and reroll one more time. Add a taser, yes. How about a scar? But lost duck. Uh, I actually do want luck enough. I'll lock that instead of this scar. I think luck's gonna pay off big because luck is more items, and those items are also gonna be more money now that we have bag. This run's gonna be in the bag. <laughs> it will be if I can find some trees. There they are. Hey, you got one. The Hedgehog. Melee and range damage from minus HP regen. Feel fairly committed to elemental at this point. I'll recycle that. Take more luck? Let's do it. Let's let's go all... Uh, well, not all in, but heavy in on luck here. Ooh, piggy bank. I'm going to lock that. Really early piggy bank. Like, ridiculously early piggy bank. Twenty materials. Twenty materials. HP from consumables is really, really good here. So I'll lose the dodge. Although I'm not all that happy about it. Mm. Last harvesting upgrade. We should start taking survivability next. Probably. Get a beanie. All right, so now we have a piggy bank. We gain 20% additional materials at the start of each wave. And that's going to compound with our harvesting, which is bonus materials at the end of each wave. And our crates for money. And all that stuff. Not this time, Barricade. I need all the speed I can get on this character. However, pick up range and harvesting, although the minus dodge is nasty here. Currently at zero dodge. And both of these other stats are very good for us. 
Oh, did I say I was done with harvesting upgrades? I think I lied. Might have lied a little bit. Things that look like moldy boxes. Those are those are healing, yeah. Not sure why my controller decided to give up the ghost there. Don't like losing the regen, but I'll take it. Then I'm gonna recycle. Attack speed sounds okay. More elemental damage sounds good. Alright, let's get a couple of these leveled up. Combine two more torches, pick up the wand, buy this metal. Oh, flamethrower. Well, hello there. Buy you in a bit. Oh, poisonous tonic. Attack speed, range, minus HP regen. Buy you in a bit as well. Boxes get automatically collected at the end of the wave. Um, another quality of life change, they're, they don't get vacuumed towards me unless I'm missing health. So they, they won't get auto pickups unless uh, we're slightly injured. Yes, four crates this wave. Make it five. Just four. Max HP for every 80 materials we have. And we have a piggy bank. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. I will do that. More piercing damage. No. Three more elemental damage, please. All right. This run is headed in a stupid direction. Minus 41% damage. All right, I'll buy that and this too. Flamethrower in time. Everybody gets burned.
Oh, I see what the problem is. Okay. I gotta swap my batteries. I'll be right back. There will be no more interruptions. At least there shouldn't be. Trade damage for armor, I'll do it. Elemental damage, yes. Metal for everything up, also yes. And 12% dodge, although I'm at negative five. I'll take the red upgrade. Ooh, fuel tank for four elemental damage, yes please. A little bit more speed, yes please. And we are just gonna let our money multiply with the piggy bank. So what is my burn damage up to on the flamethrower? 16 times five. That's pretty good. is 20 materials too, don't forget. And then those materials get multiplied. And well, it's silly from there. Free coupon, I'll take it. Blood donation. We get a huge boost to harvesting, but we take one damage every second. I think that is probably a way to die here, although the boost to harvesting would be substantial and our money would go even more ridiculous. We're already at a thousand materials. I don't need to trade my survivability to get more. Crown! 10 harvesting. Harvesting increases by an additional 10% at the end of a wave. Okay, but am I sure I don't want blood donation? That is a cool item. I've never seen the crown. But we will absolutely pick that up. Take a ritual too. Take another little frog. Another minus five dodge. I took the 12 dodge up. I probably shouldn't take the little frog. What's the point of staying alive if you don't have a hundred thousand materials? You're asking the right questions, kid. One more reroll. Banner? Take a banner. Oh, I think I missed the taser upgrade there. I probably should have bought that. Failed to notice. Eee, hey, those crates, though. Still want to see the five crate wave. It's gonna happen. Tyler! 
Spawns a little guy. Got minus four engineering, so he's not too helpful for us. I'll lose a little luck for a bit of regen, sure. I'll keep choosing dodge. Surely it had to be correct. Commit another ritual as well. All right, there's a taser upgrade that I do notice. And yeah, give me more luck. More luck, more items. That's just science. Little bag that counts down under the material count. Any materials you don't pick up at the end of a wave turn into the bag icon, which double the value of materials picked up on the subsequent wave. So essentially, any materials you don't pick up will carry over to the next wave via that stat. You get access to them later, so money now is more valuable than money later, always. So you want that money now. Just Anytime you're wondering in Potato, should you pick up your, the materials, just repeat to yourself in your head, it's my money, and I want it now. will not be standing still, statue. Gummy Berserker always skeeps me out. I don't like negative armor much, but I do like dodge chance. Explosive items. Super upgraded explosion. Just reroll. Pretty sad torch upgrade. A less sad torch upgrade. More trees! Ooh, candle is four elemental damage. Minus 10% enemies might be bad, but I'll take four elemental damage. And a free 200 materials at the start of the wave. Minus 10% enemies could be arguably construed as a good thing for this character anyway. Three crates, come on, five crate wave. I believe. Look at all those trees. There it is, the five crates, I think. Yes, it happens. Six. Six items in our inventory. Yes. Take that. Plus 1% damage for every speed we have. We're at 21% speed. Take it. Even less enemies. You know what? Sure. More HP regen. Yes. Melee damage. Not useful. Recycle it. And more materials from recycling enemies. Wrong order, but I'll still take it. And give me even more luck. I want another wave like that. 110 harvesting. Give me a schmoop. Upgrade to torch four. Two more elemental damage. Alright, I'll take an alien magic. I don't like the luck down, but I accept it. So what exactly harvesting do? Harvesting is material and experience at the end of a wave equal to the harvesting stat. So one harvesting is one XP, one material. More harvesting means you can get a higher level character and buy more items, kind of getting ahead of the game's curve, essentially, which is definitely what's happening here, as we're generating crazy amounts of materials so that we can kind of create whatever build we want. Also, I'm dropping so many crates, because there are so many trees.
more elemental damage. Recycle the book on engineering. Even more elemental damage. And free rerolls. Well, heck, I'm not going to say no to any of that. Nor the attack speed. Nor will I say no to... Uh, the Flamethrower 3! Even better flaming. Percent damage at 14. Let's take a worm. One more bunny. Okay. And keep getting about 200 per by ending each wave with a thousand unspent materials. We essentially get lots of... We could compound interest and get crazy, crazy amounts, but... Um, we ensure that we stay at a decent power level if we spend some of it, rather than none of it. Although we do gain max health based on our materials, right? Maybe it's time to do that. Got uh, 13 HP regen, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, I forgot to use the free reroll I got. Because I didn't want to spend any more money, that's why I didn't reroll. Probably should have, though. Oh lordy, it's another huge crate count wave. Six more. Estee's Couch. Two HP regen for every negative speed percent you have. Gives you negative 15 speed. Not for us. This is a really cool item, but this ain't it. Vigilante ring won't be a whole lot. I'm going to take the materials here, actually. And we'll take the armor. Who knows? Maybe I'll go explosion. Minus damage when we take damage. And some more max HP. Please create... The Chonk. Oh, this is it. Alien Eyes. We're going to scale the damage of Alien Eyes so hard. Just you watch. Getting six free items every wave good? Attack speed up, 10 damage down. That's an even trade, so I'll take the materials instead. I don't have wisdom yet? Give me wisdom. I think a little bit more harvesting for the last bit here. Chance to instantly attract materials. Sure. Two more armor. You got it. The gnome. Big up to melee and elemental damage, but minus range and pickup range. Interesting. More trees. Make it a flamethrower. Four, please. This inflicts 46 times 8 burning damage. And there's the 3,000 materials for you. It's mostly piggy bank. Piggy bank does all the work. This is the explorer character whose focus is uh, trees. We've managed to kind of break the game economically. I have so many items that really the enemies can't do anything.
muscly dude. No. Engineering, no. Elemental damage, yes. Range damage, no. In fact, give me more range so I can toast enemies from further away. Cape. Huge lifesteal and dodge. 20% dodge for the low, low price of minus two elemental damage. And burning proliferation. Yes, please. Give me that. Mammoth. Lots of melee damage and HP regen. No need for that. Take another banner? Take another banner. Well, it gives everything except elemental damage? What a bummer. Another alien eye is perfect. Alien eyes build is go. Yeah, I thought we could have gotten a torch upgrade. I don't care. We're an alien eyes build. What does alien eyes do? Every three seconds we shoot out this wave of 12 eyes and the eyes do damage based on our maximum health. But here's the thing, we also have an item that says you gain more max health the more materials you have. See where I'm going with this? The more money we have, the more max health we have, the more damage these eyes do. I have a lot of money. Thus, it's a build. 20 more luck, I'll take it. Three more elemental damage? Sure. I want percent damage ups. find them. This metal plate is okay. All right. Just uh, keep my obscene amount of money. We're now at 134 max health. You see these eyes are doing 95 damage to anything they hit, which is killing most enemies instantly. The more copies of the item you have, the more eyes you shoot out in a ring every three seconds. So you can actually see my max health increasing during the wave as I pick up materials. There's another copy. And more luck. And more speed. In exchange for luck. And more elemental damage. So now shoot 18 eyes, currently doing 111 damage for half of our maximum HP. Take another injection. Head injury. Teaser four. Cap my max HP? How dare you even suggest such a thing? I think we just go in with as much max HP as possible here. 153 max HP. 121 damage from each of these eyes. So if I stand real close, they all hit him, dude! Flap. Toasted. 158 max L. That's a new record for me. 
such an unassuming item. GG. GG. All right, let's do uh, let's do one more. Let's do one more with a character we've gotten no wins with. We've already beaten the saver. Oh, I even missed I missed the item we unlocked actually. Whoops. Crazy. The precise character. Let's start with a thief dagger on crazy. Crazy has a big bonus to crit chance. And more, uh, sorry, no, attack speed. And more range with the crit weapons, precise weapons. But has negative dodge. So, dodge very bad on him. Some sort of compass. Well, I'm sure we'll see it at some point. Grab a first wave harvesting. And let's grab some crit chance on this character. I would also like to take a shuriken. Ghost scepter, huh? Minus 10 range damage though. Shurikens use melee damage as their stats. That's fine. Shurikens bounce when they crit, so they're quite nice on this character. Bonus range, especially, too, on them. Let's grab two melee damage, make our attacks hit a bit harder. Grab a second shuriken, yes. Two more melee damage in exchange for minus regen. Sure, that'll cause us to blap pretty hard. Four melee damage. Yeah, that's good. Either reroll or take 8% damage here. Take 8% damage. And I'll definitely take 7 crit chance. Heck yeah. Let's get another Thief's Dagger. Let's get a Scar. Get our experience points gain upped. And we're at now at 25% crit chance, which means this is... 45% chance to crit with a Thief Dagger. When the Thief Dagger kills and gives a bonus material, there's a little dagger icon that'll peer over the enemy that was killed. Let's see if I can point it out here. Yeah, there it was. There's one. Just got another one. And there, too. Pretty, pretty subtle, easy to miss. But just a little bit of passive extra income from these Thief Knives. Armor is one of my favorite stats in this game. Just reducing damage by a percentage is so nice. Certainly we're not taking dodge. Let's get the armor. Ooh, early luck, one of my favorites. Give me propeller hat. Do I want to pay for the pickup range? I don't think so. Sword. It's hm. precise. Let's go with this.
All right, still early enough. Let's get five more harvesting. And five more crit chance. And another shuriken. So higher level thief daggers have more chance to give materials. Take another hedgehog too. Would you be insane to play this on mouse and keyboard? No, there's a, there is indeed a mouse only mode in the options. I play with the controller for my own convenience, but uh, mouse and keyboard actually makes it uh, easier to mouse over the tooltips, quite frankly. I think you have a better experience with it. I like using a controller for this mainly to give my hands a break from the mouse. Which matters a lot when I use a computer day in, day out. When I'm working and when I'm not working. Definitely getting a lot of uh, bonus materials now. You can you can see that symbol proccing quite a bit. Heck it, let's get over 20 harvesting. 20 is a kind of a nice break point in this game because you'll get plus two at the end of waves rather than plus one. Ooh, metal gives everything except crit chance, but bummer, crit chance is actually kind of important for us. Would I be willing to make the trade anyway? Armor and speed sure is nice. All right, I'm sure I'm going to regret this, but I'll buy one of those. I'm not going to buy Leather Vest because we're negative dodge, and that's mostly what Leather Vest is about. Let's get a better shuriken, though. Higher tier shurikens bounce more times when they crit. I think each hit needs to crit to continue the bounce chain, so they're really only good with lots and lots of crit chance. If you're going to keep offering, like, the really good harvesting upgrades. Ten more luck is tempting, but yeah, let's go ten more. Ten more harvesting and fifteen attack speed, or maybe I should take nine max. Kind of low on max health. That would have been a good time to take the lifesteal, too, quite frankly. Max HP and melee damage I'll take. Max and HP and melee damage I'll take. No, I'm losing attack speed, but... Ah, attack speed. Cool. Well, we came out ahead there. Could go up to purple shuriken, get another knife. Let's just we roll one more time here. Scissors are technically a precise weapon. And they've got a high lifesteal chance. Eh. Scissors are a good way to keep uh, healthy on this character, though, it's true. I bet a six scissors build would be surprisingly good, actually. doing burning in this run. Although you could with this character. Alright, I don't want to take any more harvesting. Let's get some move speed. Teaser 3. Let's get a 
purple shuriken and then a new shuriken. And a purple knife. And another defective steroid. I've had so many of these. Our attack speed's penalized quite heavily, but... We're at 14 melee damage now. Not that our weapons only scale off a percentage of our flat melee damage, but it's still an important enough number. Oh, wave nine. You're such a delight to play. me the luck. And let's restore some of that attack speed. And max health sounds good too. Trade some luck for XP gain melee damage. Deal. Since we just picked up some. Get some more armor. I like metal, metal plates. Two armor is a really good trade. It's like you deal 3% less damage, but you take about 20% less damage. It's definitely a good deal. Do we add bat for a little bit of life steal? I think we should. Lower our harvesting slightly. Ooh, wings. Ah, give me another black belt, actually. Double black belt. The karate master. Do we take wings for speed and a little bit of range? I do. The speed is super useful. The range will improve the shurikens too, as well as the daggers a little bit, but mostly the shurikens. So will be a flying shuriken angel of death. Also can't help but notice we seem to be generating a lot of money. In the good way. Ah, crit chance. We haven't seen that in a while. Let's get some more. Attack speed. All the others are useless. Or I can reroll. This is level 15, so we're guaranteed to get a purple tier perk. What would I like most? Lifesteal, maybe. I'd also be pretty happy with armor. Okay, let's reroll. Speed and range. Make more speed. Like the wandering bot. Ooh, quick chance. Give me that. Spawns a little bot that slows down nearby enemies. Kind of nice for keeping things away from you. I'm not going to buy another metal here. Learned my lesson the last time. Characters, this this is a uh, stabby. What's his name? Crazy. The critical hit character.
And tear. 20% chance to explode for... 10% chance to explode for 20 damage. Not on this run. I don't like that minus harvesting. How about plus harvesting? I'll take it. Give me that armor back. Ooh, a purple shuriken. Another metal plate, too. Make a red shuriken. Bounces up to four times on a crit. Currently 82% chance to crit. Seems nice. Oh, we can go purple knife, too. Or, sorry, red knife. Red knife deals quadruple damage on crits. Also 87% chance. Maybe one of the ugly tooth there. Paparato, thank you so much for 122 man raid. We're doing some bro tottering today. Hope you had a lovely stream yourself, sir. Welcome, welcome. Don't know if you heard yet yourself, Papa, but we had the most absolutely ridiculous Hexagos fight today. 17 turns. With 70 hit points entering the fight, no damage taken. It's a great time. Uh, we are blendering these fools. I don't need this book. Need any book. Yeah, six melee damage, that's where it's at. Could discard the shuriken, pick up a knife. Oh, I wanted the glasses. What was I doing? I should have taken those glasses. Whatever, this is damage and life steal, that's good. And a piggy bank. Get in here, piggy bank. That's right, and we didn't. We only didn't have full HP for Hexagos because the Wheel Gremlin stabbed me. That's right. Oh, that was so funny. But now we're playing Potato. That's going well, too. Hundred and sixty four damage crits from the dagger. Bang. Oh, don't die. Baby with a beard is only for range builds. 20 luck, though, that's for anyone. Take nine more max HP. Schmoop is minus two melee damage? I don't want that. Give me an injection. Hey, little frog has no downside because we're the crazy character. Stabbing. This is difficulty five. No, we're playing on difficulty one. Trying to get a win with uh, many of the characters to get some unlocks. So this is sort of the game's more base difficulty. Not slaughtering difficulty five, which is very hard.
definitely need more life steal. That's what I'm learning in this moment. Okay, managed to live. There's life steal, four percent of it. Perfect. And more crit chance, and more armor, and a better shuriken. Cape is five life steal for a minus two melee damage. The dodge doesn't get us anywhere. Let's take a shady potion. Get another twenty percent. Piggy bank has already paid for itself. Anything we get from here is bonus. Melting. Poor enemies. I think we don't have enough crit chance, that's what I think. Or melee damage. Thief Dagger 4, 60% chance to gain a material. It's 44 damage. Actually not that good. Red daggers now that's gonna slay. Cannot wait to see how fast we kill the boss with this build. Crazy also has a 25% attack speed bonus, which lets him really murder things. But he's really all about stacking the crit chance and then just going to town with the knives. Although I think it could be really fun to do a lightning shiv build with this guy. Just savage. Give me some more range. I want these knives to fall alive further. Alright, time to swap out the daggers. Thief daggers, that is. For real knives. Eight free max health is good too. Perfect. Triple red knife. Minus two attack speed. No. How many waves are there? 20. There's a boss on wave 20. Beat the boss and you win the run. What is our crit chance with these daggers? 100%. Okay. 100% crit on the red tier item. So we don't need any more crit chance. We're already there.
10 melee damage. Yep. And this is the four defective steroids. Let's make it five. One reroll. And uh, 12 max health and 25 luck. We don't need that. 256 crits on these knives. Dang. Just death to everyone. They don't want to be locked up. Oh, jeez. Nine more speed. I don't need any more speed. I just want to murder. Keep on that black belt. Discard this. Buy this knife. Ghost Flint, you're too late. I'll take the duck, though. Wouldn't mind some more survivability for the end as well. Your survivability is largely founded on our ability to murder everything instantly. Didn't quite get to level 25. Four more lifesteal. Now that's what I call survivability. I'll take it. More damage and more lifesteal. Yes, 14% lifesteal. Don't want the sad tomato. We're at negative six regen. Negative plus eight will barely take us into the positives. We don't need the crit chance of the blindfold. We've established that. This is three more melee damage though. And max health. That's good. One more banner is okay. Thunder Sword. Projectiles that deal damage and slow enemies around them. Scales with physical and elemental. That's cool. Wrench 4. Right, we can't afford anything now. Mastery would have been good. I could sell a shuriken to get mastery. That doesn't seem worth it. Let's just gank the boss. It shivs, sir. Stabby, stabby. Woo. Run one. Shift. GG. A hunting trophy. Chance to gain material when killing an enemy with a critical hit. That's our unlock. Not too bad. Not too bad. I think as the item pool with um, gets bigger and bigger with unlocks, this game's going to get more and more replayable. GG. 
Alrighty, folks, I think that's going to bring us to the end of the week's shows. It's been an absolute pleasure. We had some really, really good runs today on stream. As I'm setting off here, Lord Helmkin asks, What achievements do I think are the most rewarding? Are you talking about um, Brotato here? The unlocks? I'm actually not familiar with what everybody unlocks, so I'm afraid I can't answer that for you. Uh, I've also not even seen some of the items that I have unlocked. So I don't think I can speak to that. So far, there's not. I, I don't think an established wiki for this game yet would be really handy to have. I'm sure somebody will create one. See you later, Mark Soup, Faley, Virtual256, Mark McCarr, Crypt Rap Daddy, Whaler Fish, Typhoon. Mr. Baconudo, my lovely Lurker crew. Thanks again to Papa for the raid towards the end of stream there. Kaiser Soja, GG, EDL, Engine All, and everybody else. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Stay cozy, my friends. Till next time, have a good one. Bye-bye now.